for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back Money Team. In today's video, I'm going to be continuing my series where I give you guys a full breakdown every month of an entire offense or defense. Uh, and this is stuff that's basically straight off of my pay sites, whether it's Patreon, my eBooks, um, whether it's uh, my uh, Join Now community uh, on YouTube. These are all pretty much going to be videos that I poured over from there uh, and basically give you guys for free because I know that not everybody, I mean, I know you guys support me. Every time you watch my videos, you're supporting this channel. So I want to give you guys uh, as much good content as possible. So for people that don't join those pay sites and don't do those things, those extra things, I really appreciate you guys anyway. I want to show you guys how much I appreciate your support by giving you guys, um, you know, full versions of these offenses and defenses anyway. Uh, but as always, if you guys want to see me continue this series, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment sections. It really helps out the video and the channel, and I appreciate the support. Uh, if you guys want to check out my ebooks, though, these videos are also meant to show you guys what you could get uh, through these pay sites. Uh, all year long and obviously the ebook versions are the best versions because they come with written descriptions clickable links that take you right to the uh, the play so that you can watch it multiple times and really you know work on getting it down so it's a lot easier uh, than watching a full video version although I do timestamp these videos with the individual formations these uh, ebooks are basically timestamped to take you right to the play and like I said the written descriptions the descriptions are also really helpful for people that are trying to uh, you know they're having trouble setting up the play which is all very nice so so if you guys want to check those out, links in the description and the top pin comment as well. Other than that, the team that I'm doing this month is the New England Patriots, which is very similar to the Raiders. So I'm probably going to brand it as both because they did basically port over most of that playbook when Josh McDaniels got hired by the Las Vegas Raiders, which is typically what EA does. Very lazy move. There are going to be a few differences, though. So if you are running either one of these playbooks and you don't see a specific play, it's probably in the other version that you're not using, whether it's the Patriots or the Raiders. So just keep that in mind. Other than that, Let's go let's get right into the video. Next up, we have the verticals. Start off with cover two. Against cover two, just put the RB route on a streak and then motion out the B route. You can put the A route on an out route or you can put the X route a drag. I mean, I put him on an out route and then put the X route on a slant for a check down. But at the end of the day, I mean, I'm really just trying to, to isolate this wheel route outside here for a big catch and run. The tight end was open over the middle too. They both get open against cover two. Well, that's not even a tight end. It's Quez Watkins now, so even better. But the A route's a pretty good check down. As you can see, he's open underneath. I mean, I could take that. I mean, it's, it's, everything's open here. You know, I mean, cover two's not a very good defense right now in Madden 22, but it's really easy to attack outside like this. Let's go ahead and let's hit the, uh, the Quez route real quick because it is there. As long as I can body that, you can see right there. I mean, it's, it's not as open as the outside routes are, though. Has a similar effect against cover two man. I do the exact same setup. And you'll see he just runs around the potential jam. Although the um, the tight end was open too again. I mean I was watching the tight end when I threw that ball, but you can see everybody's open the same way. Against cover three. Not as good, but if you motion this out, a lot of times the uh, the A route will just get open right at the seam. That's probably the best thing you can get out of cover three out of this right now. You can put the X route here on a comeback once again and put the uh, the A route on a streak and the B route on a drag, similar to another play that I put out. And the RB route should get open across the field again, although I don't know why I didn't catch that. I guess it was just a bad throw, you know, say good accuracy. We'll do that again. And we'll get uh, we'll get that playoff at some point. Why is he not catching this? Well, you can see it's gone. Alert! Alert! We'll do it one more time. Because if it lets me, let's do this one more time. Like I said, that that RB route is just streaking. I don't know why I didn't catch any of those. Next up, we're gonna do cover four. Exact same setup. 
Should be the exact same results, although this takes a little bit longer. Because you gotta wait for this guy to pass. It's to the point too when I get that pass lead that I might not actually be able to catch it in bounds. But we'll do that again. So just wait till he crosses that safety and then boom, there we go. That'll be it. If he catches it, yeah, there we go. So we got easy one play touchdown against Cup 4 regular as well. Next up we got the branch return. Against pretty much any defense, you can just put the B route on a streak and then the A route on a flat. And you can really work the flat and the uh, the RB route concept together. If it's a man coverage, the flat route won't work. But if it's his own coverage, it'll typically get open underneath any of them. Against cover three, against cover three, put the B route on a streak. Motion out. You put your running back on a route and then motion him to the line. Then put the X route on a streak. And this is pretty much going to be the play. The B route will get forgotten uh, at some point by the cornerback. And then you can bullet and pass lead up the field for a very big play. If you streak the A route and the B route, the RB route will get open against just about any defense, man or zone. Um, as you can see right there, they're going to completely disregard him in the uh, in the uh, the shorter route because everything's going to get pulled back by the double streaks. As you can see right here, he has to react to that or else you know there's a chance that he get beat for a one point touchdown. So very big play. Except at the Z spot and go. Very similar concept. I'm just going to streak the X route. If the A route gets open right away, I'm going to take it. If it's a man cover, just wait a little bit. And then typically this route will be open above it, which is the RB route. So it's really a two read uh, play uh, between the A route, which is typically only a zone beater, and the X route. I'm sorry, the RB route, which is a man or zone beater. Next up, we have the Z spot. It's another play that can work against just about any zone coverage. The B route here, I'd put on like a slanting check down. But at the end of the day, if it's a zone coverage, I'm reading the A route first. If it's there, I'll take it. If it's not there, typically the B route will be open above it. I'm sorry, the RB route since I'm on this side. But ultimately, it's going to be the same thing. Here we got a man coverage. Like I said, I wait for that RB route to get open. And it looked like he had position, but we still got that over the top. So man or zone, that route should get open. It's just about anything except for cover four. Next up, we have the corner. Pretty much every route here is going to beat man coverage with the exception of the tight end. The tight end and the running back are both going to be best against zone coverages. As you can see, this X route here is just a really easy play against man coverage. Uh, is most, it's really just a corner route. Most corner routes beat that. You also have your Y route, which is going to be your check down. And the B route also works out pretty good. But the wire out here is in a better position to get usered. So it really depends on where your user is. If your user starts to follow the corner route, then that's going to be your option. The B route's probably the worst man beater here, but it does beat man coverage if you throw it uh, at the right timing. When the cornerback you know, flips his hips and turns his back, you can throw it right in front of him with a quick strike. And then, like I said, your running back is really going to be your best zone beater. Next up, we'll pick cover two zone. Put the Y route on a streak, and this cornerback route here will get open against cover two, or the running back will. I mean, I could take the running back. It's really a high-low concept at that point, where you're really working the corner route and the running back, and that's pretty much going to be your best cover two concept. You can also have success against cover three and cover four, for that matter, with the exact same setup. going to do the exact same thing. The streak will pull back the cornerback, and that will get the corner route open against cover three as you can see he really has to choose between the uh the high and the low route so it really depends on their zone drop depths but that really can work against multiple defenses any zone coverage really go we'll pick that one more time we'll pick cover four this is a matching principle so it's going to react a little bit differently but it's going to work the exact same way because that streak is really the mvp so one more time like i said just wide open any zone coverage doesn't matter what it is he's going to be wide open underneath and he beats every man coverage as well next up we have the halfback counter it's just a good run play. It's not a great run play as far as, um, you know, I mean, it's a good run play up the middle. It, it takes a little while to get the acceleration back from the counter run, which is probably the biggest issue. But if you have a running back that accelerates fast enough, you see how big the lane was there. Typically, this, this lane will close up by the time I get through it. But most run plays in formations, like gun formations, are really just inside zones. So it's nice to have multiple run plays that can go in different directions. You have a, a one where you can go wide to the right. Now you have one where you can go wide to the left, making this a much less predictable running offense. And this is actually a pretty good run play. I don't want to undersell it. As you can see, we're getting some pretty good carries. Next up, we have the PA cross. First up, I'll, chip, I'll pick uh, Tampa 2. Go ahead and we'll run this from the hash mark to the open side of the field. Against cover two, run from a hash mark to the open side of the field. This will make sure the tight end and receiver are spaced as far apart as possible. Put the A route on a streak 
and both the tight end and the uh, the B route can be very big plays. If I have a super fast tight end, that could probably be a one play touchdown. But the tight the receiver's fast enough too that I don't really have to worry about that. The receiver is going to be the route that I want to throw to anyway considering that that's my faster receivers you can see we can get outside for an easy one play touchdown it's not a huge lane but you can make that happen next up we're just going to choose man coverage you have a lot of really good man beating routes on the left side both the x and the y route will pretty much beat man coverage every single time as you can see it just gets inside there you can almost time this to turn it up the field but that's a little bit more difficult than I think most people are going to want to try to do, especially since you can get in trouble doing that. But you can see how this guy here, once he gets out of the middle of the field, he's going to get open across the field as well. You could always put the A route on a drag to give yourself a route going in the opposite direction so that your opponent can't use her in the direction of the two routes. But you can see there, the Y route was wide open as I get an under pressure throw. The Y route, for whatever reason, gets wide open instantly. So if you want to get creative or if you want to try, you can block your running back and try to hit that Y route up the field. This is a route that I've shown in other things where it's like you can tr almost time that and get a catch and run up the field. If, uh, you know, it might take like a lob pass. Like I said, this is not something I'm necessarily recommending to do in game, but you can try to make this happen. Let's go and let's freeform this. As you can see there, I'm trying to trying to get that, I'm trying to use that reaction that the cornerback makes off the press against itself. Do it one more time. Like I said, this is something that can be a little bit dangerous, but we're gonna try. As you can see, like if we can get that time that up the field, you can you can make a catch and run, and make a big play, but it's kind of it's kind of tricky to do. Next up, we have the spot. It's another man coverage play. Lots of good man beating routes here. The most uh, would be the running back and the tight end, though. Those are probably your two best. Everything else is a little bit iffy, but the running back here, get him open in the flat. That'll get open against just about anything, honestly. And then the tight end also, when the uh, cornerback reacts outside, especially if he's based outside like he is here, you can see once he comes inside. I mean, I didn't time that very well, but you can see he'll get inside on the cornerback. And, you know, it's something that your opponent probably, you really are playing that route against the running back route. It's something that your opponent will probably be either covering, they'll be covering one of the two if you run this play too much because they both beat man very well. This play also has success against zone or against cover two zone, so we'll go and pick that. So I'm just going to streak the A route, and either the A route or the B route should get open against cover two zone just as long as you bullet and pass lead away. Can be a bit of a tight window throw to the receiver though. The tight end also has the ability to get open as long as I bullet pass the inside and free form pass to split the safeties. As you can see, you can get an easy one play touchdown if you have a fast enough tight end as well. Next up, we got the Y sale. Your slot players are good man beaters. Your uh, your RB routes are good zone beater over there. That was a cover three, and you can see how that you know read. You just want to split the field in half pre-snap. If you look at the running back and the tight end on the right side, you have your zone beater to the flat, which is going to be the RB route, or you can see how this guy will get open over the top. It looks like another cover three with the exact same effect. But like I said, both slot receivers are very good man beaters. I don't know if I'm actually going to get a man. Here we actually, they keep dropping down in the hard flats. I was trying to hit the underneath route there, but you can see how that's going to get open under zone. And then your other, your three other receivers other than the streak will all beat man. Next up, we have the four verticals. Start off with Tampa 2. To block the tight end, you just have to motion them across the formation. And then you can basically put them back on a pass block. Then the outside receivers will both beat cover two, although in reality, the Y route will also, as you can see, he runs an option route, splits the safeties. Next up, we'll do cover three. Go ahead and pick cover three sky. I'm just gonna streak the A route, run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field, put the Y route on a fade and put the X route on a comeback route. And the Y route here can be an easy one play touchdown. If you, uh, if you watch the cornerback, he hesitates on that comeback route just enough that you can get separation and get past him for an easy one play touchdown just bullet and pass it away from the safety next up we have the switch fork it's multiple man beating routes here the running back is probably the best as you can see he just gets outside super quick that's probably my favorite and you know outside routes are better than inside routes because inside routes can get usered the a route does beat man two also i really didn't pick man coverage though you can see here we got a man cover one he does beat that so you have two really good routes only one can be used. You have some good options when it comes to the Y route and the X route too. As you can see, the X route here uh, gets inside of the cover one cornerback. But every route here can beat man coverage as the B route here does get inside of the cornerback. If you throw it late enough, he will body that cornerback and make a catch. Next up, we got the four verticals. Start off with cover two. 
Put the A route on a drag and the Y route, and really the every route, to be honest with you, beats cover two here. As you can see, the X route here is going to get open to the outside. You can have that same look on the other side with the other route, as long as you're running it from the middle of the field. Um, but the Y route also is going to be a big play against cover two. As you'll see here, you can just basically split the middle of the field, and we get a very big play that way. As cover two is not a very good defense if you spread the defense apart like this particular formation does. Next up, we got the 45 quick base. A lot of times this is the best run play in the formation. You just want to follow the guard. He's your pulling blocker. He's going to be your fullback or your lead blocker. If the defense gets spread from the three wide receiver set, it'll make this play even easier. This play is really meant to be run outside more than your typical inside zone because that's the way that the play sets up. As you can see, it's a very good inside run play. Next up, we have the halfback slip screen. Pick random again. This play is all about the slip screen, but the A route can get open quickly enough that you can throw it if you have a quarterback who can throw off his back foot, which Jalen Hurts cannot. So if you have somebody who's a little bit more of an accurate thrower, that'll work out. But otherwise, you pretty much just call this play to catch your opponent with his pants down and hit him with a screen play, which is a very good play because a lot of the routes that are being run from this formation will get your opponent's attention and draw it away from the running back. Next up, we have the inside zone. It's just your best inside run play. This formation has a tendency to spread the defense, second level defenders a lot of times because of the three wide receiver set. So this play will be best against any defense that reacts like that. Like right here, you can see there's only one second level defender, so it really makes it for a much easier inside run. So, you know, bread and butter run play, best against cover two man in zone because the safeties drop back post snap. Next up, we got the PA deep outs. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with cover two. No adjustments needed for cover two. This is going to be a big play. The Y route just runs right through the center, um, which, you know, that's just, this is just perfectly set up because these out routes really pull the safeties apart anyway. Next up, we'll pick cover three. Put a motion across this tight end, put him on a streak, put the B route on a comeback route. That's all we really got to do. I'm going to go ahead and block the running back just to save time. And you can see he'll help out with the edge. And the Y route is just gone. As you can see, there's just nothing out here as the cornerback basically just drops down on the um, the comeback route. Just make sure he runs from a hash mark to the open side of the field bullet and passes it away from the safety. Next up we got the shark halfback wheel. Go ahead and we'll go random. The running back route can really beat any defense, man or zone. If it's zone coverage, you can throw it at any point in time. If it's man coverage, you just have to throw it before he turns up field. So right here, I don't know if I'll get any man coverage looks. I said that was like a look like a hard flat cover too. Well, let's see. I want to run this until I get a man coverage. Like I said, if you throw that right away, that guy is in man coverage, but he's not going to get to it quick enough if you throw it instantly. So this is a route that I use a lot from the Saints playbook. It's one of the, my favorite routes in the game. You just bullet, pass lead away outside. You can get some easy catch and runs pretty much every single time. You have the option to motion him out too, which I find can help. But if it's a man coverage, like this guy looks like he might be in coverage now, I mean, it's an option. I'm not saying that it's something you have to do. I think it actually works better if you just leave in the backfield, to be honest. Next up, we'll choose cover three. Against cover three, streak the A route, streak the B route, and put the Y route on a fade. The running back you can leave alone, but if you want an extra blocker, you can take that as well. And then you're just going to basically, you know, pass lead outside. You can see it gets over the top of the cornerback because he's too busy deciding whether he's supposed to cover that route or the comeback route. If we go to the replay, you'll see that he typically acts a little bit fidgety as he doesn't know what's his true responsibility. But the bottom line is it holds him down just enough that this guy gets streak right past him. Next up, we got the Y sail. The B route doesn't beat anything, but the three receivers aside of him all beat man. The running back beats zone. The A route can beat zone also. As you can see right here, they drop down hard flat onto the onto the running back. Got to take the tight end. You could flip the play or flip the field. You could cut the field in half pre-snap making this much easier like right here it looks like we have a cover for quarters or maybe it's a man's or a blitz and then like i said this guy here is going to beat anything man or zone pretty quickly it's a very good route if it's a zone coverage flip the field in half to the running back in the a route side the a route here obviously beats that man's or blitz very quickly and i probably could have been gone for much more if i didn't run out of bounds but you also always have the y route so if your opponent is running man coverage and starts using that side you can always go to this side as well and have a very big play as that looked like it was another man coverage the X route can beat man coverage as well, although it takes the longest out of all three of the routes. So that should really be your last read. Next up, we have the middle high low. Start off with cover two. Go. 
I'm going to motion this guy in and put him on a streak. I'm going to put the A route on a drag. That's pretty much it. The Y route's going to be the read as he's pretty much going to get around that cover two cornerback. Although there he got bumped a little bit. Still made the play. Uh, might have to wait a little bit longer before making that throw. You can always motion across the tight end too. So that you can leave that uh, that drag out there doing what he's doing. And then that will also create this guy getting open um, over the drag. So the drag can actually help against cover two. There's two ways to run it. Next up we got the quarterback draw. Anytime your opponent stretches their defense too thin, just hit them with a draw play. You always have a run play even though it's with the quarterback. A lot of people think that you know they see an empty backfield and the run's not an option. But you can always hit them with this run play. It's a very good run play. It's still as good as it always was as long as you have a mobile quarterback. Next up we have the Y corner. This play here, you just got to motion in the X route, put them on a streak, and then put the A route on a drag. You can do anything you want with the other routes. But the Y route should get outside of just about any manner zone. As you can see right there, that's pretty much, I don't even know what it is. It doesn't matter. This route will beat just about anything. They look like a man coverage. I tried on everything, including cover four. It worked the exact same way on all the defenses. You can see here, just as long as you wait for that guy to get outside the cornerback, bullet and pass lead away, he'll beat every single defense in the game. Next up, we got the bench swap. Go random again. Put the A route on a streak, and you have a corner, a bench concept on the one side, which is very helpful, and your corner route and running back on the other side. The running back is going to beat zone coverage. I would say this is the better side to work on. It's going to beat any zone coverage underneath, and the, uh, the corner route above it should be just about any man coverage over the top. So this looks like it's a cover three, although no, we actually do have a man, although he really got caught up in the uh, in the exchange coming out of that break, so that's why I didn't get open. But the corner route, or the um, the uh, the out route will get open against pretty much anything as well, so you're really just kind of working, you know, split the field and have pre-snap, so you're not really making these decisions during the play, but you really have a lot of different options here. Like that was a cover two, I could have threw that to the corner route, he was wide open, but obviously I messed that up took the underneath route you can put the a route on a comeback for something like this as you can see we have a man coverage and then i got hit that was a man's or blitz i got hit but he was open so i'll go and i'll do that again he said that's definitely a cover two he's going to be wide open and he might have a touchdown here if he can get past his safety but yeah at the end of the day i mean you know you're just working the corner route and the underneath route with the a route really its only job is to pull back coverage although here this looks like a cover three as we can easily get that up the cover three seam. So that does have its applications as well. Next up, we got the bench. This can really be running against any defense. Uh, you can really run to either side. So I'm gonna go move the ball to the center of the field because both sides are good plays. Pretty much all these routes beat man and zone. You just really wanna pick which side you're going to. I wanna go to the three wide receiver side the most even though Goddard's side is a good side. So whatever side you're going to, just streak the um, Whatever corner route I should say you're going to, just streak the receiver next to it and then drag somebody underneath it. And you'll have the same concept that'll work regardless. So you can also pay attention like which side your user's on can really dictate which way you want to go. As this here, this looks like a man coverage. Like I said, Goddard, I, I really would rather go to the receiver side because Goddard's not going to be as fast as whoever I have running that. So this is really going to be a better setup as we have what looks like a cover two zone. You see this guy's going to get wide open against that. That's pretty much going to be the setup no matter what the defense is. The out routes are a good place too though. As you can see right here, that's just a simple man coverage. You can hit those out routes. They'll get open against cover one, cover three. Not really sure what we're looking at here. Like I said, that there's a, that's a man zero. As you can beat man coverage with that. To me, that's definitely the better side. But against, like, this is definitely a cover three, so we should have, well, it might be a cover one. So you see that the uh, the wire out there can beat that as well. Like I said, that corner route is really going to be just about any defense in the game other than cover four. Next up, we got the corner in goes. This is a man coverage concept. We'll beat just about any man coverage, but we're going to pick cover one hole. Every route here pretty much beats man coverage, but the Y route and the A route are going to be the two best ones. As you can see, one of them is going to get open every single time, and only one can be usered. So if the Y route gets covered for whatever reason, like right here, he gets outside, I'm just going to switch over right to the tight end and he'll be open. So that's really the first and second read. Go ahead and I'll do that one more time. Like I said, I'm watching that Y route. For whatever reason, they're leading him inside. I can just go right back to Goddard and complete it to, to him, who's running pretty much the exact same route. You can also motion one of these guys out, put him on a smart route, and then put the other one on a streak. And this stop and go route can have success just as long as the cornerback bites on the out move 
As you can see right there, he kind of slowed down to catch it, but that would have been an easy one play touchdown. So let's go to the instant replay. As you can see, this is real all about if he bites on the outside, like, you know, at this point, it's the same thing. If he's even he's leaving, if he bites on that outside, I can already bullet or just lob, to be honest with you, and have an easy touchdown. As you can see, I'm already in my throwing motion, and we're just having an easy play. If he didn't have to slow down to catch the ball, I don't know if Hurts doesn't have enough arm, but that could have been an easy touchdown. The streak on the other side is really there just to pull the safety over. Next up, we got the mesh. Start off with cover two. Motion this guy out here, put the Y route on a streak. And the X route here, once he gets past the jam, can find a home outside of the safety over the top of the cornerback. I probably could have caught and ran that for a bigger play, but I was just happy to get the completion. Let's go and let's do that one more time. Like I said, it's really all about the jam. If he gets jammed inside too much, it can be, a, it can be an issue, but you can see how there's obvious space out there for a big play. The Y route can also be a big play. As we'll go ahead and we'll work it the other way. Like I said, that, that, that comeback route really pulls the other safety in and it just lets this guy get right over the top for a big play. Now, this play can really work against just about any man or zone, so we'll go and we'll pick random. Against random, you're really just watching the drags. The comeback route is a good man beater too, as you can see right there. That was like a man zero blitz. He'll usually get open against zone coverage, especially if your opponent chases the drags out of the center of the field there our guys actually ran into each other but we still got one of them open so you're really just watching the drags whichever one the user doesn't follow is typically going to be your read as you can see these you know the drags are really going to be the play good short yards play once the drag gets followed though then you're going to throw it to the b route over the middle the little comeback route you can also motion out the running back put the b route on a streak and the rb route will be a big play on the other side as well just have to wait for him to get even with the defensive back and you know once again if he's even he's leaving it's going to be a big play not a, necessarily won't play touchdown but it has opportunity for that next up we're going to do cover three i'm going to pick that again cover three sky go ahead most this guy out put the b route on a streak and the rb route can really pull and make separation for the or i'm sorry the running back can really create separation for a throw up the seam that's pretty much all you're going to be doing with that play Next up, we have the PA Flood shot. Let's go and let's pick cover two. I'm going to put the A route on streak, motion out the B route here. And the A route is going to be a very big play right down the center of the two safeties for a very big one play touchdown if you have a fast enough tight end. He can get zone chucked to a point where he might lose his acceleration and not be successful for that, though. So make sure to be aware of that. You can also run the other side. So the guy we're gonna motion this guy out, put the Y route on a streak. And the X route will now be the play as it's shooting to the other side for a very big play. Although, you know, you really can go to either route to be honest. Next up we'll do cover to man. Gonna motion this guy once again, put the Y route on the streak, block the running back. And the X route is a very good man beating route. As you can see there, it kind of just went right there. I don't know what happened with the throw, but or the catch was kind of warped too. But you can see how that's also a very big play. The tight end is a good man beater as well with what he's running. Let's say right there. Once he gets outside of it, he's pretty much gone. Although the tight the safety came over. I didn't really make a good throw either. It's kind of a late throw. Let's go. Let's do that one more time. Let's say right there. He beats that jam. I mean, I can just throw it right away. If he beats that, if he beats the press, he's already instantly open. If he doesn't beat the press, I gotta wait. Hopefully, he doesn't beat the press, so I can wait. Yeah. Like I said that's, you know, that's a big play. The safety can be in the area, but it's still a big play because you're still pass leading outside away from the safety. Next up, out of the tray wide flex, we have the inside zone. Just the best run play in the formation, once again, I mean, you're going to get a lot of opportunities, whether it's man or zone. The receiver typically takes out the linebacker. If the, like right here, he's spread out wide because he's probably a man coverage over that guy. That basically gives me a lane. If he's in the lane, a lot of times the receiver will come in and take him out of the play. Right here, though, this is not really the best look because there's probably not anybody that's going to really pick up on that. That would not be a good look. But it's really a one-on-one. -on -one. You really just want to make sure that wherever that linebacker is, that that receiver has has a clear path to him. That's really what's going to create your running space. Here we go, here we go. 
So here you see he's out over the receiver. That'll give me an option, and I, uh, you know, just a nice big hole. And if he's in the hole, a lot of times the receiver will come out and basically take him out of the play. Next up, we have the PA crossers. So this player here, I want to do is motion this guy out, put him on a 10-yard out route, put the B route here on a fade. That's all I really got to do. Cancel the play action. The Y route is going to be the play. Just can't let him get too far across the field. You can see he's going for a one-play touchdown. That was actually a little bit too far, but once he gets to the center, I pretty much bullet and pass lead up. Also has success against cover two man. I don't really think you have to put the put Goddard on a speed. Or you can probably leave him on the speed out because it's about the same 10-yard route. But we got to put him out, move motion him out there. You see here the, the B route gets open right over the middle once again. Might not be a one-play touchdown against cover two man, but it's definitely going to be a big play. Then against cover three, against cover three, you got to make that motion, but you got to put him on a comeback route. Then you put the B route on, on a not a, a streak or a fade, it doesn't really matter. But the Y route once again will be the read once he gets across the safety there, and you can see I don't get a good throw, but he definitely has his space. Against cover three, you got to make that same motion, but you got to put him on a comeback route or a, you know whatever. Then put the B route on a fade. And you should have a very good cover three one play touchdown once the, the this route here gets across once again, the Y route. You can see he was very wide open as the cover three cornerback is covering the actual uh, comeback route. Same setup works against cover four. We'll go ahead and we'll pick cover four. And it's going to work the same way. Typically, cover four, you have to run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field. We'll go ahead and we'll try this one time. It's just so it doesn't take as long to cross the field. But you can see it still worked from this side. But from the hash mark to the short side of the field, it might work even better. Next up, we got man cover one. This year, just put the B route on a fade. That's all you really got to do. The Y route's going to get open uh, for an easy one-play touchdown. You can put the tight end on a drag or any number of things. But you can see this is a very easy one play touchdown against cover one as well. Next up we got the 45 quick base. It's another good inside run. This one here is a little bit wider in the direction, uh, looping to the opposite way than the counter run. Um, you know, it's it's just a good run if you really I mean you're gonna follow your your pulling guard. This is not my favorite run, but there are a lot of pro players that do like the uh, the quick base plays. As you can see right here, I mean, if this guy pulls and gets on that uh, on that linebacker, I do have opportunity. So it's a good inside run. It's more of a wide looping run to the left, which complements the overall formation. Next up, we have the halfback angle. It's a good man beating play. Pretty much all the routes here beat man except for the streak, the A route, the running back. They all beat it pretty quickly too. So if it's a man zero blitz, they should all work. The B route is probably my favorite or the Y route. But that's something you can get in any any adjustment, to be honest, is the zig. So you have a lot of options. The B route's a very good route as well. As you can see there, I mean, he breaks on him, and then for some reason he loses acceleration. So that was just kind of weird. But you can see how he beats that route, beats that coverage. He said, I don't know if I have to wait a little bit longer. I try to throw in the break, but then for some reason he loses acceleration. But multiple man beating routes. Really all four routes beat man. Next up, we got the verticals. Go pick cover one. B route beats cover one very easily. Once he makes that second break, just bullet and pass it away. Make sure you get a little bit of a better uh, pass than I just threw. You block the running back. I don't find it's really necessary though because the pass rush doesn't really get home. And I don't know why I'm slightly out throwing my guy, but you can see he is getting separation. So let's block the running back. Maybe I'll be a little bit less worried about getting the ball out on time. As you can see here, we finally get that completion. Like I said, when he makes that second break, he's just wide open against cover one. Next up, we have the halfback counter. This play here, it's just a good counter run. A lot of run plays in uh, formations like this only go in one direction. So it's good to have a run that can go in the opposite direction. As you can see right there, I really had to sprint outside to make it do. But uh, you can also go right up the middle. It really just depends on you know what you're seeing in front of you. It's a good run play. It's just something that... Um, is good at keeping your opponent, you know, fr from just expecting inside zones all the time, as this can have success in a different direction than what is typical. But like this formation here, I'd switch over to the quick base because obviously there's multiple defenders here, and I'm just setting myself up to fail to try to run into that. So if your opponent's shifting all of their men towards the more probable inside zone type runs, take it outside and go the opposite direction for a very big carry. As you can see, the biggest runs I had was sprinting completely away from the inside 
all the way out and around any uh, you know defenders right in front of me. Next up, we have the inside zone. Just your best run play in this formation, as it'll typically the receivers will spread the uh, or the linebackers apart enough that you can have a big play. Like right here, they're covering. He's covering Pascal, so it's just a big lane, and I should be able to you know, take that advantage to get a pretty relatively consistent run play from this. Next up, we got the PA counter go. This is another man coverage play. This play here has three routes that beat man. The X route's really just pulling coverage back. The Y route's probably the best because it's going to be your most explosive receiver. The tight end is also very good, though. This is a very similar route. So you can really throw to these routes all game until your opponent tries to drop on them. You can see right there, I mean, even with the cornerback trying to cut in front of it, I still have inside leverage, so I can still take that away. Although that route really can do a better job uh, than it did there uh, because, you know, I'm in front of it, so I can always come back to the ball. But it can get outside of it if you have a, bit, a little bit of a faster tight end or if the cornerback is playing inside. And then once your user starts covering those, the B route here really can be a good play. Although there, I just had a guy come screen right off the edge, so I'm going to have to run that again. But this uh, this B route is a good man beater, so let's go and let's do that one more time. Like I said, just waiting for this guy. I don't know who's blocking, but you can see how that beats man coverage too. So I have three routes that beat man coverage on three different portions of the field. Next up, we have the PA shot wheel. Start off with cover two. So block the running back. And the wheel route here can be a big play as long as you bullet and pass it outside. You can get a catch and run, but you know, there that kind of carried me out of bounds. Like from here, you want to run to the open side of the field, but if you're on this hash mark, it's best to throw it to the X route. So where you are in the field can really dictate where this play is best. As you can see right here, you split those safeties very easily now and get a very big one play touchdown right over the middle. So it really depends on where you are on the field. Next up, we'll choose that again. We'll choose cover one hole. Another pick play concept, if you're running from a hash mark to the open side of the field, put the X route on a curl, block the running back. The B route will get open as long as um, he runs into the defender, that, or runs into either the defender or receiver there. There it didn't work out. It's not a guarantee. You have to watch to see if um, if it gets in the way. We'll go and we'll do that again. Like I said, it's not always going to happen. So this time here, like I said, we'll see if that guy gets in the way. You see he does. We got a very easy play, although it was an underthrown ball. But we'll go to the replay. I had an inaccurate throw one more time because Hertz just is just sailing balls left and right. But you can see how if the defender gets caught up like right here, boom, runs into my other receiver. Sometimes I run into the cornerback. I don't lose acceleration, so I'm wide open. I just didn't get a good throw. So we'll do that again. So I'm gonna do that again. Like I said, we're just watching the B route, making sure this guy bumps him off. And we're still not getting good throws. I don't know what's going on. We're still getting inaccurate throws, but you can see we can play that pass, so I'm happy with it. Easily would have been a one-play touchdown, though, if it would have been an accurate throw. And you can really do that against any man or zone. We're going to pick over some Brave. Same setup. We're going to motion the running back over, though, because that does help when it comes to blitzes like this. So I'm not trying to frustrate myself too much. And you can see my boy runs into the uh cornerback once again and we get another big play although we didn't get a one play touchdown because zach pascal isn't really that guy but big play regardless next up we got the pa slot corner god will pick cover two against cover two just put the y route on a streak and the b route is going to be a big play as you can see there's nobody out here um you know once the uh once the once he gets over the top of the cornerback next up we'll choose cover two man same setup, just put the Y route on a streak. The B route will get open once he gets outside. And you can see how the safety there. Probably threw that a little bit early, but same setup for cover two man. Streak this guy. And the B route here will get open outside. Uh, we'll just bolt and pass it away once he, you know, because he, he basically forces, if you watch the replay, the way that he jams this receiver, he's basically giving him outside leverage. So if he has outside leverage, he's going to beat him outside every single time. If you watch the other receiver, um, receivers that have inside leverage typically won't will get open inside. Next up, we'll choose cover three. Against cover three, just put the X route on a comeback, motion this receiver across, and then put everybody on streaks. Everybody except the B route. I want the B route on a fade, block my running back. Run from hash mark to the open side of the field, and the B route here will get a mile of separation once the cornerback reacts to the comeback route. Just make sure you're running from hash mark to the open side of the field and bullet and pass lead away from the safety. Next up, we'll do cover one. 
for cover one, I'm just going to put the uh, the B route on a streak. You can block your tight ends. It really doesn't do anything. But I could also put them on a drag if I want to check down the opposite direction. The Y route is definitely the best man-beating play when it comes to cover one. As you can see, it just completely poops on whoever was in coverage. And the drag is a very good check down. Next up, we have the RPO zone alert bubble. It's a good inside run, especially against like cover two, uh, man and zone because the safety drop back. But you really just want to watch the receiver and the, really want to watch the cornerback in front of the receiver because that's really going to dictate what you do. If he follows, you have to hand it off no matter what because otherwise you're probably going to throw a pick six. So I'm really just going to watch the B route. If he follows like he has on the first two plays, I'm just going to take what I can on the run. I'm getting a pretty good run. I'm getting about five yards. But at the end of the day, I really would like to throw to this guy. As you can see here, there's much more space outside. I mean, they're both good. That's there. I get closer to 10. But at the end of the day, there's plenty of opportunity to this guy. There's nobody even in front of him here, so that's going to be an even easier read. If there's no cornerback there, I mean, you can definitely take that. But that might have been a man blitz zero where the safety was responsible. It's really hard to tell. Here's another play. Like I said, he doesn't react. I'll take it outside. It's really up to you where you want to go. But uh, it's a good run play. There's opportunity in two different directions. Next up, we'll pick the verticals. This is a cover one and a cover two man play. No real adjustments needed. This B route just destroys cover one man once he breaks the second time. Uh, I don't know why I didn't catch that. But you can see he got wide open. That's really the most important part. We'll go and do that again. Like I said, no adjustments covers or cover one play once he he just it just you know breaks in front of that uh and in front of that uh, cornerback i'm not sure why that has that reaction but it's just programmed to do that it's a very good play also has a lot of success against cover two we'll go and we'll pick that against cover two man motion this guy across and the y route will get separation that he wouldn't have gotten otherwise i'm gonna put the b route on a fade and i'm gonna block my tight end put the x route on a 10 yard out route and you'll see how the Y route really gets around the jam, which is something that he wouldn't have done otherwise, as we can get a very big play against cover two man, although I safe caught that instead of rack caught that. Like I said, I'll do that one time without that, and you'll notice that he gets jammed and rode all the way across the field to the point where he's not really too viable of an option. So this is something that you only really get when you motion this guy across. <coughs> so motion him across, fade the B route, put the X route on a 10 yard out route, block the tight end gonna go ahead and do this one more time and like i said you'll see how he just gets around that jam he just just completely breaks it and then at that point you're just basically you're just hitting a home run although i don't know why i didn't catch it but you saw i caught the one previously so very easy play against cover two man next up we have the y in it's cover one man play i'm gonna put the x route we're gonna run from hash to the open side of the field once again we're gonna put the x route on a curl and then pretty much every other route will beat man coverage your b route here will be a big play although i'm trying to create a pick concept once again with the curl route even the curl route would probably work to be honest with you but i'm really it's not part of the read structure we're really going to just watch the y route as you can see sometimes he'll get past uh this this guy here because the pick route didn't actually work i, I didn't really time that very well. well do that one more time the y route here hopefully the cornerback runs into the pick wide receiver as he did there and you can see get right over the top for a very big play but i'm glad that i messed up the first time because it shows that it really this wheel route does get covered by zone coverage as long as he doesn't make contact with the receiver like he does here. So anytime he makes contact with the receiver or even the cornerback on his own team, it will let the receiver get passed for a very big play. I don't know why I didn't catch that. And then you also have the A route here, which is a very good man-beating play as a check down. As you can see, he's open on the other side. Pick the Y in again. This time we'll pick cover two. Against cover two, just put the B route on a streak and put the X route on a slant. And the Y route will be a very big play once again, pretty quickly. I mean, I could have threw that even earlier than I did. But, uh, yeah, really easy zone beater against cover two man. Next up, we'll pick cover three. Against cover three, motion this receiver across. Put the A route on a streak and the B route on a fade. You don't have to do anything with the X route, but you can put him on a streak also. He's going to occupy that guy regardless, so it doesn't really matter. The B route here is going to be the play. As you can see, it uh, creates, there's a hesitation between the cornerback and whether he should cover the wheel route or the streak that's going right past him. I didn't even really get a good pass lead, but let's watch the replay because I saw the cornerback was doing some pretty interesting stuff uh, trying to decide whether he wants to drop down. You can see just a lot of hesitation. Like he just gets choppy. He doesn't know where to turn around. I mean, that's a clear indication that he doesn't know which route he's supposed to cover. And by the time he does, like I said, I should have bullet and pass led outside. I bullet and pass led up a little bit. But you can see he gets passed, which is the most important part. Like I said, run from hash mark to the open side of the field is the most important part. I could probably throw this ball immediately, but you can see bullet and passing away a little bit is probably a good call. Next up, we have the Y post. We're going to go ahead and we're going to run random. I'm going to motion out this this running back here, put him on a, on a fade, 
And the A route here will get open against just about any man or zone. That was a man zero blitz um, because the safety was not even in position. So I could quick throw that. I could go ahead and do. I mean, I can motion across. Like, I can leave the running back in the backfield. The running back is not essential to this play. I could leave him and motion across one of these other receivers because I don't need two in routes. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. We'll motion this guy across. Like I said, the A route, this is a cover three, which it looks like. The A route's going to be a very big play against that. As you can see, I can back shoulder throw that, and he's going to get open in the cover three seam. To set this play up, motion across the Y route and put him on a fade. If a, if a man defender follows, you know you got a man coverage, and it can change your reads. But at the end of the day, the A route's going to be the play, as it's going to get open against just about any man or zone. As you can see right here, we can drop it right over the bucket there uh, with... Um, with the the cover three seam. Now here, this looks like an obvious man coverage. I have a good man beating route in the X route. So if I motion this guy across, I could easily hit him right away. Although it looks like this is a man zero, and I think the tight end is going to be open immediately if they're not man aligned, which they obviously are not. So that's always an option as well. Next up, we got the halfback counter. Most run plays just go up in the middle. This one here can go outside. I find this is a good counter run place that your opponent can't make too many adjustments in the way of the halfback inside zone. So this is something you definitely want to have in your arsenal, but it's not always going to be as explosive as a play or as good as a play as the inside zone. It's just a good play to mix in every once in a while. As you can see, it really if, if you can get inside that pull and guard, you can really have some good run lanes. Uh, but ultimately, you're not, you know, this isn't a play that I expect to hit home run. You also want to make sure, like here, we have an extra defender in the box. This is not going to work because the defender's there to basically blow that up. So you really only want to run this when there's less defenders on the left side. Like right here, there's a few less defenders. I could easily take this, and you can see there is a lane. I mean, there's an inside lane, there's an outside lane. It's a good run play. Next up, we got the inside zone. This is just the best inside run play. It's going to work best against things like cover two, uh, man and zone, because the safety drop back. But you can really use it against any defense where the defensive alignment is spread. And this formation has a tendency to do that quite a bit based off of the alignment. It can be run inside or outside as well. Next up, we got the PA switch dig. Pick cover two. Motion the tight end across, put him on a streak. And the X route's going to be a big play once the tight end gets set, which really took a long time. But you can see he gets over the top pretty easily. I probably could have threw that way earlier. But you can see it's a big play. You can also make the wheel route the play by motioning the ball over, just running it from the hash mark to the open side of the field. Put the A route on the streak, put the B route on a slant. And the RB route now is going to be a big play against cover two. As you can see, that slant pulls the coverage inside. And I probably got another big play if I didn't run out of bounds. But big plays on both sides of the field. Next up, we got the slot two buck. Pick cover two. All we're going to do is put the A route on a streak, put the X route on a 10-yard out route. And the RB route is going to be the play. Although, to be honest with you, the A route could easily have been the play too. But I think it's better to do this. I don't know what's going on with the inaccurate bullet pass there, but you can see he splits the safety pretty easy. Let's go and let's do that one more time. The check and release running back is a really good route too. But yeah, like I said, you can split the safeties here pretty easily with a one play touchdown opportunity. Next up we have the four verticals. Start off with cover two. Just motion out the B route and streak the A route. And you have cover two beaters on both sides of the field. The X route here will be a big play once you if you wait till he passes the cornerback. Uh, that guy's a little bit faster than the tight end, so I think that's a little bit easier to make a one-play touchdown. But you can also have success to the tight end side. So we'll go ahead and do that as well. As I'm really just going to wait for the tight end to get around the cornerback. And once he's even, he's leaving. So once he gets to parallel with the cornerback, I can make that throw, bullet, and pass lead to the boundary for a big play or more. Next up, we'll do cover three. Against cover three, put the X route in a comeback, then motion out this tight end, and the A route tight the A route will actually help to pull that safety even more. I'm also going to put the Y route on a fade because I don't want the option route anymore. I want to make sure that he goes in that direction. And you can see how even if that cornerback doesn't react, you can get past that cornerback if you have a little bit more speed. If the cornerback's reacting, you can just put the Y route on a streak because the fade a lot of times he'll get he'll get too close to that cornerback so if that happens just basically put him on a streak have him run through the chuck and then he won't be so close to the cornerback as you can see now he's inside but that's fine because i can still get that bullet and pass it away and it's better than what i had in the previous play so there's really two options to run here i personally think the fade is better we'll go ahead and we'll put the x route on a smart route to shorten that 
Obviously, um, you know, this is all dependent on what happens with the zone chuck, though. So if he gets pushed outside too far, like right here, it gets a little bit too far. I can still get past him, but it's just, it's, it's, it's a tighter window, and a lot of people might have trouble making that throw. Next up, we have the halfback base. This is just one of the best run plays. It's kind of an inside run, but you can also take it outside depending on, um, you know, what you're looking at. As that there felt more like an outside run. It's more of an outside run than like your typical inside zone. As you can see, it's kind of angling outside. You want to follow 69 though. You want to follow your pulling guard right there. The tight end actually let me down. Uh, but that's your lead blocker. Wherever he goes is where you want to go. As you can see right here, he just basically springs me for whatever I can get. So that's your lead blocker, even though it didn't work out the last two rounds. Next up, out of the wing flex week, we have the inside zone. It's definitely the best run play. We're the best inside run play in the formation. Uh, again, it's cover two, man and zone. The safeties drop back, which will give you extra run space because they drop too far back to help out and run support. And this is just going to be your bread and butter run play for this formation. Next up, we have the PA Verts comeback. I'm going to go ahead and pick cover two. This play here, if you motion this guy out, can be a big play against cover two. Just going to go ahead and wait for the B route to get past the uh, the cornerback. And I don't know why I didn't catch that, but you can see that he was open. This is a very similar concept to things that I put out from other formations that are very similar. Go ahead, we'll do that one more time. I said I actually want to complete it. The A route probably gets open too, to be honest with you. But have your fastest tight end out here. And I guess I have enough speed to hit a one-play touchdown, even though I wasn't expecting that. I know Calcaterra's got some speed, but you see you can have a one-play touchdown against cover two. Next up, we'll choose cover three. If you streak the A route, I find that that'll help pull that safety over just a little bit more. And I also put the comeback route on a smart route. As you can see now, the safety is pulled over a little bit more and the cornerback is pulled down a little bit quicker. So those adjustments can make this play a little bit better. Next up, we got the double ends. Another good man beating concept play. You got multiple routes here. Um, the tight end, the running back, I mean, pretty much every route. But the, uh, the running back is going to be my favorite once again. As you can see, he can either body that guy or get outside of him. That's one of the best, fastest linebackers in the game covering him. But at the end of the day, that is an option. The A route also gets across the field very quickly. As you can see, it cuts it cuts across the field very quickly, which is something that's helpful because of the yellow zone in the middle. Uh, the RB route too, I mean, that'll clear for that. And then you can see how you can body that. So pretty much all these routes are going to be man being routes. Next up, we have the drag wheel. This is another cover one or cover zero man play. Going to go ahead and I'm going to move this to the hash mark once again because that is important. This is another pick play concept, which is probably why the a, the B route is running this augmented comeback route is because the, the developers probably figured this out themselves. But you're going to put the Y route or the running back on a pass block, put the B route on a, on a curl, and then you'll see how the RB route will set the pick or the B route will set the pick for this receiver, and we get a very easy one-play touchdown against pretty much any cover one or cover zero uh, man coverage. Go and let's watch the replay of what happens here because, once again, this is a pick play. This is a pick play concept that I'm creating where this guy here is following, but look at that. Second that receiver gets in the way, sometimes the cornerback covering the, that receiver will get in the way. But at the end of the day, there's going to be somebody getting in the way and creating massive separation. This play also works against cover two. Just going to put the B route on a slant or even a drag. And the RB route will get open pretty much the exact same way. As you can see, that slant really pulls him in and just makes this guy get wide open down the field uh, because the jam or the press or the zone chuck that that cover two cornerback is doing on the B route can really be what creates so much separation. I don't even really have to wait to throw the ball. Like I said, he just follows that guy, and then I just have him open pretty instantly. Although it, it gets more separation if you wait, but you can see how big of a play that could be against cover two. Next up, we have the halfback power. It's just a good outside run play. This formation has, I mean, there, I could have took it outside, but I read the defender behind the block, and I knew he was waiting, so I took it up inside. But this is a good outside first, inside second run play. So right here, he's outside waiting. I'm not going to make that mistake. I'll cut off short inside. You're really just watching that outside edge with the tight end uh, as it really can dictate whether you can go inside or outside. It's 44 just keeps getting passed, and that's why I keep going back inside. It'd be nice for him to hold that block down one time so I could get outside there. As you can see, once again, the hole opens up right over the middle. So it's really all about what happens on that edge defender. Next up, we have the PA cross. It's another man play. I'm going to want to run this from the hash mark to the open side of the field. Because at the end of the day, every route here except for the check and release beats man coverage. The X route here can get open instantly, but I made one mistake 
which was I want to cancel the play action pre-snap. I want to take away this play this pre-snap because this is not going to help the timing of this throw. As you can see, it's very timing based, it's very quick. If your opponent's running a lot of cover zero, you can block the A route, block the running back, and then hit that route, which you will get open pretty much every single time. The RB route also beats man coverage. As you can see right there, it just takes a lot longer to get across the field. And then the B route also beats man coverage last. So you're really going from left to right here, as you'll get this route here at the end. Uh, although there, I once again forgot to cancel the play action. Canceling the play action, putting your running back on a pass block is of critical importance because he really can mess up the timing and the accuracy and yeah, you can mess up your quarterback's footwork, all those things. So you want to make sure that you have uh, that running back on a pass block pre-snap. Next up, we have the PA Fork. It's another cover one man play or cover zero. So I'm going to go ahead and run this from the hash mark to the open side of the field. Just going to put the X route here on a smart route, block my running back, and I'll keep my, my A route on a streak because this is, you know, you don't want uh, too much from the, um, you know, if you have too many guys blocking, these guys will become safety defenders, which is kind of what he did there, but you can see it still worked out. So let's go, let's go to the replay and see what happened. Smart routing, this is what makes this play work so well. As you can see here, once he gets outside, and like I always say, if he's even, he's leaving. He bites on that outside shoulder, and then boom, we're hitting a one-play touchdown right over the top. The second he's inside, and I see that the, the cornerback bit on it, I can throw it right away. But yeah, you can see how the RB route, if I cancel this play action, it's really good separation, although I don't know why I'm not getting good accuracy. It says I'm getting good accuracy, but we're not completing it. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to block the running back pre-snap so that I don't have to worry about that. And you can see how we can get really good separation on this route as well. So if the big route's not there, the little route here is a really good check down the other side. Next up, we have the stutter curl seam. We'll go ahead and we'll pick cover two. All we're going to do is put the A route on a streak. And the B route here does a pretty good job of running around outside and getting separation over the top. As you can see right there, we almost had a touchdown. The tight end can also work. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's put the A, I mean the A route streaking tight end. Once again, bullet, pass leading, free forming inside can also have success. It's pretty much both of these routes can score against cover two zone. This play also has a lot of success against man coverage to multiple routes. Go ahead and pick that again. The comeback route is a good man beater, but I'm really going to focus on the A route and the Y route because those are going to be the two best, the tight end and the running back. Although the running back had a hard time getting out of the backfield there, which is the reason I didn't throw to him. But you can see how he just beats that. Did he just break that dude's ankles? I think he just broke Isaiah Simmons' ankles. But yeah, at the end of the day, those are the best routes. Next up, we got the tight end whip. It's another man coverage play. You got multiple routes. The RB route's a quick out that beats man coverage. You have the uh, the zig route, which beats man coverage. Even the B route beats man coverage, but I would say those are my two favorites, as you can see here. I mean, that's if you throw that in the break, I mean, that was just dirty. He was open by a mile. The running back also has a tendency to get open. Although, like I said, the B route, everything gets open. These are all man beating routes. The running back might be best against zone. I don't know if he's having trouble just because it's Isaiah Simmons covering him. But that's a route that also typically gets open. As you can see right there, it does a little bit of work. Uh, but yeah, all, every route here beats man. Next up, we have the Y out. This is a man coverage play. We're going to pick man cover one. This play here, you can really set a pick with the B route by putting them on a curl. But you have to run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field. If I put the A route on a streak, you'll see how the running or the RB route can really get open because of the, uh, the bump that cre is created by the curl route. The B route doesn't have to set the pick a lot of times the defender sets the pick that's really the issue as like there the actual cornerback of the cardinals is what got in the way but the bottom line is you're creating an issue where either the receiver or the defender covering the receiver will get in the way of the defender coming around on the wheel route as you can see right there it sets a pick you have a wall you have two you have a defender and a receiver getting in the way which is what makes them lose acceleration and makes this guy basically gain a separation Next up, we got the halfback stretch. This is really going to be best against man coverage. Against cover two man, there typically won't be a cornerback down outside here holding down the edge. So that's going to be your best scenario to run the ball. That wasn't really a great run, but you can see that there's definitely opportunity there. You could always flip the play too. I find that even in uh, cover two scenarios, flipping the play is not a bad option. As you can see right there, I mean, that one guy blocked two guys. I'll take that. That's not necessarily always going to be the case. But without a doubt, that's going to be an option. You could always flip the run. I would say it's best to flip the run against zone. It's always best to run it like this against man. Next up, we got the jet sweep. It's another very good man play. 
Once again, man coverage. There's not a cornerback out here because the two wide receivers set. That's going to give you your best opportunity for this uh, to be a big run. So this is really something that can also work against cover three, cover four zone because the cornerbacks drop back. But it's definitely best against man. Next up, we got the PA spot. So we're going to streak the A and the X route. That's all we really got to do. The, uh, the B route here should get open against just about any single defense in the game. Man or zone like that there look like a man. About the only thing that won't cover or that the B route won't beat is cover four quarters and cover four match. Looks like we got a cover two here. Might be an easy catch and run for a big play. But uh, yeah, any man or zone except cover four, that route's going to beat. And then the fullback should beat any zone underneath. Next up, we got the PA boot comeback. This is a good man coverage play. The zig and the tight end are both good man beaters. You can see I canceled the play action post snap with the art with the right trigger. I find it's best to leave the play action and just cancel it. You don't want to let the full play action go through though, because a lot of times it can really get you into into trouble. Although there, it didn't really seem to have too much of an issue, so it's really up to you. But all three of these routes are man beating routes, including the zig would probably be the first read, the tight end would be the second read, and the comeback would be the third read. Next up, we have the PA post shot. This play's a natural cover two play. This finds best to motion Goddard out and uh, cancel the play action so that you can get a little bit more protection, a little bit more time. And if you get a good bullet and pass it, that was kind of a weird uh, pass animation. I really didn't get the good catch and run. But if you do this setup, I'm going to block my running back this time because I really don't need him doing that. I'll get a little more blocking, block both of them. But yeah, this setup here, I mean, you just bullet, pass lead up. You can see how as my controller disconnects, We'll see how it looks when I come back as we get the one play touchdown. <laughs> I don't know how my controller battery died, but you can see how that's a one play touchdown against cover two. Next up, out of the I-form slot, we have the stretch alert bubble. So whether you throw into the bubble screen or the stretch play, they're both going to be best against cover three and cover four because the cornerbacks drop back. If you're going to throw to the bubble screen, or if you're going to run the stretch, I mean, <laughs> it's best to motion this guy out because it makes the cornerback drop back. Here you can see it shifts alignment, but it just gives me a better opportunity to get to the edge. Although the tight end didn't really block that guy there. Next up, we have the PA fullback slide. Make sure you put a running back, which I don't typically do, but I'm going to put a running back at the fullback spot for this pass play. And we'll go random. Also going to make sure you run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field, not the other way around. And we'll give yourself some catch and run space. Gonna make that exact same adjustment I made with the stretch run. I'm gonna motion this guy out. If it's a zone coverage, he'll get open. If it's a man coverage, the A route will get open. Although you can see here, that was actually a man coverage. But based off of the motion, he still got out and beat it anyway, based off the fact that the, the man defender was so far behind once you make that motion. If you make that motion, if you don't make that motion, he won't get open that way. So both that and the both the A and the B route will both get open. Here we got a man coverage with a slightly different defender running the uh, the man coverage, so it cuts it off. But you can see right there very easily the tight end is going to beat that just about every single time. You could always streak uh, the X route to give yourself something to pull back zone coverages as well. Go and we'll do that one more time. The uh, Both the routes, everything but the um, but the drag route really can't get open. As you can see right there, a little bit of a tight window throw, but he still beats man coverage at the end of the day. So the fullback slash running back is a good zone beater. The A route is a good man beater. Also has a lot of success against cover three, so we'll go and we'll pick that. And on defense, we'll pick cover three. Against cover three zone, just put the A route on a streak and then motion your fullback out once again. This will actually hold down the uh, the cornerback, which is something that isn't very typical of a lot of plays. And then you can see how the B route here will eventually get across the cover three formation. It'll be a very easy one play touchdown. So we'll watch the replay here. You can see how, you know, this is your cover three cornerback. And for whatever reason, since there's nothing over here occupying, he just stays down. This guy here does try to drop back into that area, but he is not the cover three cornerback. As you can see, he just never flips his hips enough and commits to the route, making it a very easy one play touchdown. Next up by the I-form tight, we have the PAY seam. We'll go random. Make sure your best receiving tight end is at the X spot, although I didn't do that. I just have whoever's there. Put the A route on a drag and the tight end or the, um, the drag route really should get open against any man or zone, as you can see right there. Uh, he definitely got in the way. I mean, you could you could definitely kick this up a notch by motioning across one of these tight ends and putting him on a streak. This will also help, especially against zone coverages for the X route, but it won't help against man coverage. As you can see right here, it actually kind of changed the alignment. So if it's a zone coverage, motion him across and put him on a streak, but if it's a man coverage, just basically put him on a drag. This also has a lot of success against cover too. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to pick 
a cover two. We'll have to switch over to the, the uh, Tampa two here. Really don't need any adjustments, but I'm going to put the A route on a streak. And I'm sorry, the X route on a streak. And you'll see how the A route can get open right over the middle between the two safeties. So as long as that doesn't get user, that's an easy option. You can put them both on a streak though and really attack the B route, which is going to be a slightly better, uh, you know, area of opportunity based on the fact that the user won't be out here. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that one more time. Like I said, we're going to do a freeform pass. If you're using the old style passing system, it might not work as much. But you can see how you can really drop that in an area where the cornerback and the safety really can't put a play on the ball. Next up, we have the strong stretch. It's going to be best against cover three and cover four zones. This play can really work against anything. You just want to make sure you're going in the direction where you have outside containment from your tight end to their box defender. So here Goddard does have outside opportunity, even though he gets outside of it there. You can see that's still going to create the lane that I need, whether he gets outside of it or not. If he gets outside, I got to go inside. If he doesn't, I can go outside. Here's another good opportunity. I got to hope that this fullback can get out to the point where he takes away that cornerback. I can give myself a motion if I want to, although I feel like that can give away the play a little bit. But based off of some of the pass plays, which is also going to utilize that motion, it really doesn't. So it's really all just making sure that you have outside containment. And like I said, you do have some options. If you try to motion the fullback in the other direction, though, you can see it's a completely different motion. So it doesn't really work out the same way. It's not really the way that I want to go. Um, it really only works to the short side. And you can see how you can have success with this. I mean, it's a very uh, stout run play with a lot of size basically three tight ends because most teams don't even have a fullback on the roster anymore next up we got the halfback stretch halfback stretch once again i find it's best to flip it and run in the opposite direction you can motion across either tight end or uh the receiver uh, you can see here though it does change the formation but i still feel it's best to probably have that extra blocker as you can see it basically just picked everything up and just blew open some holes you could do it without the motion though you just want to make sure you don't have a defender like this super wide to the outside you're never going to get outside of that in a scenario like this it's best to just run it the way that it is and now you can see you're going to have a lot of success um you know just running it as is so it's really a simple read you're really just trying to see you know, do I have that edge? Like right here, I don't really need to motion across a blocker at all because I really do have a pretty good shot at getting that angle, getting that edge, although I didn't get it. That's the type of look that I'm talking about. Next up, we got the inside zone. This play here, it's probably best to flip and run opposite the the receiver tight end because you can see a bunch of defenders are bunched up over there. It's probably best to run it to the shallow side. It's just a good inside run. At the end of the day, it's not an explosive run regardless to either direction. I just find it makes the most sense to try to run away away from the most of the defenders. As you can see on the next play, we get a very big play because of that. You can run it in the direction of the extra blocking, but to me, it's best to run it away from the extra defenders. Here's an opportunity for the slightly bigger hole to run it in that direction again, and you can see we get a very big uh, very big hole so very good inside run has explosive capabilities depending on what you're looking at on defense next up we got the pa cross this play really works against any defense all i have to do is put the x route on the street you can motion them in to try to get these crossing receivers open a little bit faster but at the end of the day all you really want to do is pull back any outside zone so you can get these uh these underneath routes open below it you're really just going to work front to back a route to b route the a route should be there all the time unless it's like a hard flat like right here and then the b route you can see is just a deep crosser that typically will beat uh, most zones most man just about anything both routes really should beat man or zone depending on what you're looking at next up we have the pa sale start off with tampa two all you have to do is put the x route here on a 10 yard out route against cover two zone and the b route here will have a very big opening right up the middle just as long as you time that pretty well i don't know if i'll get a one play touchdown but you can see the opportunities there especially if you have a little bit more speed than smith has a 91 against cover two man just put the X route on a 10 yard out route and you'll have the exact same opportunity just as long as the B route doesn't get bumped too much. You can see he gets right up the middle there for a big play. Uh, but he got bumped around quite a bit. You need, might need a stronger receiver. So here, here he gets off pretty clean. You can see we get a much better uh, look. And we're getting a very easy one play touchdown because he didn't get bumped around too much by the defender. Against cover three, against cover three, you just gotta put the X route on a comeback and the A route on a streak. That's gonna be the really only difference. Play action to me is critical. And you can see how, once again, that comeback route pulls that cornerback down to the point where you just have to wait for the receiver to cross the free safety's face. Bullet pass lead away, get a very big play. Same thing can be said about cover four. We're gonna pick cover four drop. Just put the X route on a comeback route and then the A route on a streak. That's all you really have to do. If you motion in this comeback route, it is helpful as it will pull the uh, the safety down so that this guy can get over the top. 
making it a very easy one play touchdown, but you do need a pretty fast receiver to do this against cover four. Next up we have the PA sprint halfback flat. This is a man cover one or man zero concept. All I'm going to do is block both my running backs because they don't really beat man. You can motion this guy across, but I find it actually doesn't necessarily help a lot. I think it's it, it'll get the, if that's your read, it'll get him across the formation a lot quicker, get him away from the user. But I find it's best to leave him where he is for spacing from the X route and the B route. Putting the A route on a comeback route is really the best way to get the B route open too. I'll block him this time just to show you how the B route really doesn't get open unless you make that adjustment. You can see right there, he's right on top of him. So now I'm going to make that adjustment. You can really put the tight end on a comeback route or a streak to have this effect, but doing either one of these will help the corner route get open because you'll see how he'll really get in the way of everybody uh, in as far as the man defenders. I find the streak is probably best. The comeback route sometimes tends to get the um, the receiver itself stuck in the in the garbage. So like right here, we've got that comeback route. You can see it does work that way, but at the end of the day, I think a streak is better just to clear that area so I'll block everybody, put the tight end on a streak or a curl. Like I said, they both work. The B route here, let's see, once he gets into that break, you get a very big play, uh, especially against, you know, any 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 man coverage where there's no uh, safety directly over the top would be a big play. Next up out of the I form Z close, we have the wide receiver curl. This is specifically a man beating play. It's gonna work best if you run from a hash mark to the open side of the field. And, uh, you know, basically I'm gonna be thrown to the B route. I mean, that's really the look. Once he gets outside, it's a speed out route. It's going to get open against pretty much any man coverage. It doesn't really matter, especially if you throw with timing. The X route on the other side, I mean, you can put it on a slant, you can put it on a drag, you can put it on anything you want. I don't really find that that's uh, going to be too, you know, a drag probably get open against just about anything. So the B route would be the read. The A route's also a pretty good man beater if he gets across the middle with a little less contact. But at the end of the day, this is, if you're calling this play, it's really because you want that man beating speed out route that Six is running. Next up, we have the halfback blunt dive. This play here can really be treated like uh, an inside run or an outside run, although there, uh, I guess that was a blitz. The guy just came right in. But at the end of the day, it's just one of the better run plays in the formation. I don't anticipate that happening too often. I don't know why. The guard is so occupied with that double team when he should be moving on to the next level. But you can still see it's a good run. I can flip it with the right stick and go in any direction that I want. Got a huge hole right here over the middle. This is obviously a very good uh, run play. Like I said, I'm mostly running inside, but you can run it outside. I'll try to force it to the outside. I mean, the hole's in the inside, so I'm not going to force it. But you can treat this like a stretch run if you see an outside hole. Next up, we have the PA boot vertical. Go ahead and we'll pick cover two to start. All I'm going to do is block the tight end, although in realistic, I mean, you can put him on a, um, you know, a number of different things, but you can see how him blocking works just as good, and I have much more pass protection. You can put him on a drag, you can put him on an out route, all types of stuff, but the, the route, the B route, just gets open right over the middle, so you really don't have to worry about it. Next up, we'll choose cover two man. Once again, block the tight end. That's all you really got to do. This play really depends on how much uh, the receiver gets off the jam. As you can see right there, he doesn't even get jammed. He just wiggles right past the guy. I threw it too early. But you can see how that splits the safeties. Next up, we have the PA post wide cross. This play here, I mean, you really only have two routes that beat man coverage. The B route, which you can see here, just did that dirty. That's my first read. The second read is going to be the tight end. Now, the reason it's good to have two of these plays is because your opponent is probably going to use or one of them. So it's going to be, um, you know, whoever they're not using, you just throw the other one. It's pretty much going to be the read because they both beat man coverage. You could also add a third option by dragging the RB route, which will also beat man coverage. And it'll basically give your opponent uh, nowhere to go, though. That's my much worse tight end. So he's not going to catch that ball or get open very well. But if they are, since these two routes are going in one direction, the RB route in the other direction, if you have a better tight end than I have running that, will be a very good option because nobody, you know, if he does catch that ball, if I do have a better... Um, you know, better tight end running this, there's going to be nothing out here. You can get some really good catch and runs, as you can see right there, break a tackle. And now there's nothing out here, and your user won't be out there either. So another good option against man coverage. Next up, we have the PA Scissors Flood. We'll go and pick random. This play here really is about the tight end route. I would pretty much only call this if I wanted to throw to this route because it's a man-beating route. Although you want to make sure you have your better tight end there. That's my like third string rookie tight end. I don't really think that um, he's going to beat a lot of coverages. But he's going to be the high-low concept is there. I get clobbered. But that was his own coverage and it was open. So he can't get open against zone as well. Again, when it's a zone play, you're pretty much just going to be playing the running back and the, uh, the tight end 
you know, high low, whichever way the zone go, you want to throw to the other receiver. But like I said, if your opponent's running man coverage a lot, really that'd be the reason that I would call this is because this is a better man coverage route. But you can see right there, that's his own coverage. He really didn't drop down on either. So I could really throw to the deeper route. Next up, we have the PA Verts. Go and start off with cover two. Really don't need any adjustments for cover two, but I will block the running back for extra pass protection. And the B route here is just going to cut right between the two safeties as the other safety typically follows the corner route. If you really want to get that safety over more, you can either motion out the corner route or just put them on a 10-yard out route, motion them out. Like All these things will help, but it can be a little bit more of a tell, so it's really up to you if you want to do that. You can see, though, he's, not, he's way closer to the sideline with these adjustments. So these are all optional. The fade route actually is a decent cover two concept outside as well as you can see we can get a big play to that as well because you're just waiting for them to basically get even with the corner bullet and pass lead away i'll go to the replay to show what happened there because once he gets even with the cornerback the cornerback's not going to flip his hips in time he's he's in his back pedal i'm in a full sprint at this point you can bullet and pass lead away you can see i'm already you know loading up the throw but you have to bullet pass lead to the boundary so that the safety doesn't have a chance of making a play you can also put the X route on a slant and put the RB route on a streak and then block everybody else. And this will be a good cover two concept because the slant actually pulls the guy down too. And that'll give you another way to hit a cover two one play touchdown without making all the motions, which like I said, can be tells. Next up, we'll do cover two man. Against cover two man, it's pretty much the same setup. I find that putting the tight end on a route because these tight ends will like essentially because he's out so far he'll essentially act as a blocker so putting him on a route's a good thing but you don't really have to do anything once again i mean he's going to get inside and be a big play uh it'll be an even bigger play if you motion out the tight end if you put him on an out route all the additional adjustments that i was talking about on the first play that really aren't necessary are all still going to help to create more spacing as you can see right here he just gets rough the line the press didn't even happen and we get another one play touchdown so another good play whether it's cover two man or zone Next up, we'll do cover three. Against cover three, there's a couple different setups you can do. You can motion this guy out. You can put him on a comeback route. You can leave him on the corner route. I feel the comeback route's better, though, to be honest with you. Put the RB route on a streak, block the running back. And the B route here can be a very big play if I can buy time. Although you can see right there, I mean, we have a little bit of an issue with that, but we still get the one-play touchdown uh, because, you know, that's a good crossing concept. You can also put the B route on a streak, put the X route on a comeback, put the Y route and the A route all on streaks, and you'll have an opportunity. If you motion the running back out and runs from a hash mark to the other side of the field, you will have an opportunity to throw to the B route once he gets through all the garbage. As you can see right there, the um, you know he can be a big play, including a one-play touchdown up the seam. Really depends on how much he gets jammed coming out. Typically, I like to do fades. But I find that with this alignment, the fade gets too close to the cornerback and pulls the cornerback. We'll go ahead and we'll smart route the cornerback, see if we can change that. But there you can see he runs right past. So you can throw that and you can actually get an easy one play touchdown at the seam. So it really depends on the zone chuck at that point if you go with the fade. I like the fade better, but if he gets chucked too much outside, the cornerback will react. So there's two different ways to do cover three. Next up, we'll do cover four match. So I'm just going to streak the RB route, block the running back. And this is all I really got to do against cover four as I'm getting some good pass pro over here. But the B route, as you can see, it splits the field. Got kind of a weird throw because I was throwing backwards. But you can see how that could be easily be a one-play touchdown. Let's go and let's watch the replay. As this guy here, the streaking tight end pulls this guy out of his quarter coverage. And at this point, I can throw the ball. At any point, I can throw the ball. And I think I was kind of running for my life a little bit. But you can see, throwing back foot. Definitely didn't get to step into that throw. And it would have been an easy touchdown if I would have you know, stepped into a bullet and passed that up and away from the strong safety. Next up, we have the stretch alert bubble. The stretch run and the bubble screen both work best against cover three and cover four because the cornerbacks drop back. The longer you hold this ball, the better when it comes to throwing to the stretch or the uh, bubble screen because you can see the cornerback is reacting to the uh, to the stretch. So, like I said, that's really a timing-based thing. And if you get a good catch and run, if you get a good acceleration, a good rack catch, you can make a good play out of this. The run play is just kind of average in my opinion, but it's still a good option. So, one of the I, mean, I don't think this this formation has a stretch run, so that's really one of the best options that you have. 
except we have the X slice U cross. We're gonna go man coverage, go cover one hole. This play really is all about the man beating routes and all three of these routes beat man with the exception of the running back, which is a good zone play. But other than that, the B route is going to be the best route to me because it'll get open outside the numbers. So if you have a guy running a lot of man zero blitzes, this is gonna be the best route. It's essentially a zig route. It's just like, a, it's not like the same one you run. Like if I put him in a zig, it's a shorter version. It's like a longer version. And to me, it's a better version. The Y route will probably get user because it does run across the formation, but that beats man as well. Once again, you want to make sure you have a better, you have your best tight end in this position because he's running all the routes. And then you also have the X route, which will get inside the uh, the man coverage receiver or the man coverage cornerback as well. So three very good man beating routes with the uh, the RB route being the check down, which really only works against uh, zone coverage as I kind of forced it there. Next up, we have the zone alert bubble. This year, I mean, against cover two, which this is not, it's better to run it. You can always throw it to this bubble screen, though, as long as the cornerback in front of him doesn't uh, chase him immediately. You can throw it to the bubble screen. So pretty much any zone coverage, like right here, he cuts into to, to his run lane, I can throw that out. If he follows the receiver, it's a man coverage, he's going to pick it off if you throw it. So don't make that mistake. You're really just watching that cornerback out there in front of B. As you can see here, every time he goes in, I can just take it back out. I don't know what that was because he really didn't react even after I threw it. But that's going to be uh, your option if he does chase, which I'm waiting for him to do um, as I get that one a little bit turned up field. But if he does chase immediately in a man coverage, then you have to hand it off. That's pretty much the only scenario where I would hand it off. It looks like he's never going to chase, so I'm just going to go ahead and hand it off to show you that there is a run play too. But yeah, against cover two, it'll work best to hand it off because typically, um, you know, there's the safeties drop back, so it makes it a little bit, uh, a little bit more run room inside. Next up, we got the halfback wham. It's a good inside run. It's probably best against cover two, man and zone, because the safeties drop back pre or post snap, and you can see how it's just like a trap run, and it's it's a really quick uh, motion for the blocker. So I won't give your opponent any time to really set up any you know adjustments to make. Uh, you know, some take take a long time to motion across, and it'll give your opponent time to make some adjustments. This won't do that. Next up out of the single back bunch, we have the PA fork shot. Start off with Tampa two. You got a couple different options here. One of the easier ones is to just put the B route on a streak, and the A route here will be a very big play once he gets off the uh, off all the zones. He's kind of getting jammed there, so that's one option that works really well against cover two. You can also split the field with the B route, but I find it works best to motion him in or motion him out to the line like this. And you'll see how he'll do a better job of crossing the safeties than if he were where he was. There's a couple adjustments you can make to make this version better too. You can put the X route on a 10 yard out route. Go on, do that one more time. Motion this guy out, 10 yard out route. Cancel the play action. I'm gonna roll away from that dude who just keeps getting in my face. And you can see how we can split those safeties. A little less pressure and I could definitely split the safeties for a one play touchdown. Next up we have the bunch dig. So I'll have a cover two. I'm gonna motion out the B route here, put him on a 10 yard out route. And I could leave the A route because ultimately I don't really have the choice. It doesn't let me block him anyway. So the drag is probably the best thing. You can also put him in a zig or any check down you really want. Other than that, uh, I can block my running back. That's about the only thing I can block. And this is gonna give me the most pass pro possible to, uh, to basically create this throw here, which you can see, um, you know, basically once he gets inside the free safety, it's easy to throw up for one play touchdown. Against cover one man, we're gonna motion over Goddard. The B route can be whatever we want it to be. I'm gonna put the A route on the streak once he gets across, block my running back. Uh, this is pretty much gonna be the play. I just have to wait for the X route here to get across the field. And I had to throw a little bit early because I forgot to slide my protection, but you can see how it gets across the play very easily. Next up, at a single back bunch base, we have the halfback slash. Just a very good inside run. It's essentially an inside zone uh, that you're running in the direction of the bunch. Um, it's not as effective as an inside zone, but it is a good uh, good run play. One of the better run plays in this formation. You can see right there, that was like, you know, a, a way more effective run than the first run. You can flip this with the right stick because you are under center, but typically it doesn't help. It's better to run it in the direction where you have at least two tight ends blocking, which is what makes this a very, uh, a very good run formation as you do have that additional strength in the run game. Next up, we have the quick pitch. 
It's a good run play. Sometimes I'd like to motion this guy out just to pull the defender out a little bit, uh, spread the defense out a little bit. That's really the only option that you would really need to use. Um, this is not one of my favorite run plays. I might not have a ton of success running this, but it's a pro favorite run play uh, because a lot of people like to run these bunch sets. I don't really run a ton of bunch sets personally, um, but you can see it's one of the better outside runs you can have from this formation. Next up, we have the Seattle. Typically, I'm just going to put the X route on a drag and motion out the B route. This is going to be the best play. Against cover two man, you can put the RB route on a streak. I'm sorry, against cover two, not cover two man. Against cover two zone, that will give you a much better option when it comes to throwing to this B route over the top because essentially the streak is going to pull the safety in and the, and the drag will pull the, or pull the cornerback down eventually. I mean, you could really do a couple different things here. If I wanted to work that route a little bit quicker, I could do the exact same setup and just basically put the RB route on like an out route. I could do something like this to give myself a much quicker result when it comes to pulling that cornerback down because that felt like I was waiting a little while. And if I do that, you can see I get a very easy one play touchdown as I get a big catch and run. But I find the first setup probably gives you the most options. Against cover to man coverage, we'll do that again. Pretty much going to be the same thing, only this time you don't really have to do anything. You just put one of these guys on a streak. I mean, the RB route here, I can put like a drag or something like that. This here is going to be a much better check down, and then you'll see how this cornerback here, the receiver really just runs around him. It's a pressing formation, but based off the fact that he takes such a wide looping angle, I'll go to the replay whenever it comes up rather, I'll go to the replay to show you guys that essentially it just doesn't get pressed. So here we go one more time, like I say, he tries to put hands on him, but he just runs around him. And that's what you're gonna get pretty much every single time as he beats him to the corner. Next up we have the Z spot. It's another play that really works against just about anything. You just have to put the B route on a streak. And all I'm really gonna do is read the A route to the RB route. Um, I can really put this other guy here on like a slant or something like that, whatever type of check down I want. But if the RB route's open, I'll take it right away. I mean, that's a man coverage, but he's leading out. I'll take that, get a nice catch and run. No questions asked. That should be just about any man or zone, depending on the alignment pre-snap. It's really more of a zone beating uh, concept. You can see right here, that looked like a man. He actually got out in front of it. Didn't quite get, uh, you know, that, that's not typically what I want to throw it against. I don't typically want to throw it against man. Only if I get the head start will I want to do that. Now a lot of times can happen if they're like running into people. Like here we get that that once again. Looks like it might have been a hard flat because he did react pretty quickly. But like I said, I'm starting by looking at that guy. Typically this concept works best against cover two zone though because the A route shoots right for that uh, spacing. So you can see right there, very easy play. You can easily get a one play touchdown if you have a fast enough tight end like a Darren Waller or something like that. Next up, we have the bench switch. So basically, the setup is going to be the same, but you can do it to either side. The right side works better against zone. The left side works better against man. And it's all because of what the B route and the X route are doing. If you look at the two routes, they are different. The X route is a better man coverage beating route, where the B route is a better zone coverage beating route. So here, it looks like a zone because the cornerbacks are so far off. It's not a man coverage. So I'm going to streak the A route, put the Y route on a drag. And you're going to see how the B route here will get open over the top of what I pretty much figured was a cover two zone. And it was. If it's a man coverage, they'll be a little bit tighter line, but you can really do that trick to either side. It really doesn't matter. I can streak the Y route and put the A route on the exact same play. Like I said, right here, you can see how this X route is going to get outside of it. I don't know if they were caught in bounds. This is a really good zone coverage concept. It really works against any man or zone. These outside receivers really can have success. You can see right there, we're getting in front of it. It looked like it might have been a man coverage. I'm not really sure. But you can really run this to either side. It really doesn't matter. And it'll have success against just about any man or zone in the game. Next up, out of the single back tight Y off, we have the drive flood. So I'm going to run this from the hash mark to the open side of the field, put the X route and the Y route on streaks, and then motion uh, the X route out. That's all I really have to do. The B route here will get open past cover three once the cornerback bites. You can see bites on that, that man beating out route for some reason. You get a very easy one play touchdown as long as you bullet and pass lead away from the safety. Let's go to the replay there just to see what happened. As you can see, this cornerback here, I don't really see why. I mean, the depth of the, the route 
doesn't make a ton of sense, but he bites on it, and we're going to take advantage of that. So, like I said, the second he... But second, he's basically even with him. I could throw it at any point in time, to be honest with you, which I could have threw about five to ten yards earlier. And I guess I was, actually. You see the quarterback already winding up. But, yeah, I mean, it's really easy play. Against cover two, we're going to pick that, Tampa two. It's a very good play against cover two as well. I mean, as it's configured, there's a lot of good man being routes, but you can motion out the B route streak the a route and the b route will get open over the top of cover two zone on the outside and the inside the streaking tight end has a lot of success as well so let's go and let's do this again only this time we're going to shoot for that a route because the the depth of these uh, receivers you can see he does get inside i mean i could streak i could do a couple of things to create a little bit more space for the tight end Typically, I don't really want to do that, though. So I'm just going to put the Y route. Like, if I want to get the tight end open up the middle, I have to basically pull back that other safety. And now you can see I can float that in between and safe catch it and stuff like that. But ultimately, it's a bigger play to the outside anyway. Against cover two, man. It's going to be pretty similar as the B route here will typically get outside, although we got Goddard right up the middle beating that press. Next up we have the halfback zone weak. This is the best inside run in the formation, but it does have the ability to really bounce it outside if you want to. Uh, it's definitely a good inside run though. It'll be best against cover two, cover three, uh, anything like that. Um, that's typically going to be your best look. Right here we have an extra defender in the box. We're going to flip it with the right stick to the other direction. And we're going to have another good run. As this is a very successful run series. Next up we have the jet sweep. These type of plays typically work best against man coverage. But you can have success against zone as well. This is just an opportunity to get your fastest guy the football. As you can see right there. That was definitely a zone coverage. Didn't really have the most success. I'm going against random here. But any man coverage. Like right here. This looks like a man. Or maybe even a cover four. Should have success like this. And you can see boom. We're getting outside of that. Typically it works best against man. Because when the guy motions across. The man defender doesn't follow. Where typically he would. If it wasn't a run play. He would follow. So there wouldn't be an advantage. That way you always get this advantage here. Next up, we have the PA post dig. So I'm going to start off with cover two. You really just want to put the X route on a 10 yard out route and the A route on a streak. You can motion him out, but it's not 100% necessary. It will create more space though. So at the end of the day, it's best to do that. The B route here, once he gets inside, the safety is gone by a mile. And you can see how this is a very easy one play touchdown against cover two. Next up, we'll pick cover two man. Pretty much going to be the exact same setup as we'll just basically wait for the B route to get inside once again. As it looks like the jam probably missed by a mile. And then I didn't quite get the catch and run that I wanted, but you can see how that could be a very easy one play touchdown against cover two man as well. Next up, we'll pick cover three. Cover three sky. This play here is gonna be pretty much the same setup. Just motion this guy, put him on a comeback route, put the A route in the streak one more time, cancel the play action, and they really just have to buy time in the pocket for the B route here to cross. And then you can see how that gets open for a one play touchdown against cover three. You can do a different setup as well. This setup here is just pretty much motioning this guy out, putting him on a comeback route and then motioning him back. Put the A, put the Y route on a fade, the A route on a streak, and then the B route on a streak and motion him out to pull the safety in that direction. And the Y route's gonna be a big play. So let's go and let's do this one more time. This one here to me can be a much quicker one play touchdown than the other one, so that like pass pro isn't much as much of an issue, but the extra setup will be a little bit of a tell for your opponent. So that's something you can't do too often, but you can see it's a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. Next up we'll do cover one. This time I'm gonna motion this guy across and put him on a curl route and put the A route on a streak. So this is pretty much gonna be the play. A lot of times these guys being so close will bump each other around and give the uh, the B route more separation than he might have got by himself. As you can see, we can get across the cover one formation for a big play. Although I didn't get a very good pass. I think I was under pressure, but you can see how that works out. Go ahead and let's watch the replay to see what happens here with all these extra guys bumping around. You can see it's just they just don't get the same coverage. It's the 21 and 7 are so close to each other, just kind of bumping each other off, and it just gives a big uh, advantage to the to the man coverage. So bunch concepts especially when it comes to curls are very good when it comes to man coverage next up we'll choose cover four quarters 
So I'm just going to motion this guy out, put him on a comeback route, put the A route on a streak. And this is pretty much going to be the play. Similar set to cover three. As you can see, this guy is going to get right over the top for a big play. A little bit of a fast receiver, and it would have been even easier. But you can see I can drop that in with an average receiver. I mean, above average receiver in Devontae Smith as far as speed. Next up, we have the PA Pump Go. I'm going to pick that on defense. We'll start off with cover two. We'll go back to nickel cover two. Against cover two, just streak the Y route and the X route will be a big play. As you can see, I mean, I might be able to get a one-play touchdown out of this, depending on what the safety does. But, yeah, definitely a big play. The Y route gets open, too, to be honest. You can put the A route on a on a drag to check down. And then, like I said, if I really want to, I could get a play to that, you know, to the to the outside or to the inside. It's really depending on, you know, who I want to throw to. They both get open. Next up, we'll do cover two man. Pretty much the same setup. Block my running back this time. The X route is still going to be the play. The Y route is an option. But this route here, you can see, it just gets outside of that cornerback very easily. And I got an even bigger play than the first time. Next up, we'll do cover three. Against cover three, motion this guy out, put the A route on a streak and the Y route on a fade. Run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field. That is definitely helpful. And you can see once that cornerback reacts to that outside receiver, there's definitely a scene for a catch and run one play touchdown opportunity. Although there, to be honest with you, I probably threw it a little bit early. So, And now I messed up. You see how the safety reacts when I move that guy? That's really the whole point. I can put the B route on a streak, too. I don't need him doing all that nonsense. That's just going to slow down the progression. And you can see Bullet passing it away, a little bit of freeform passing. I don't know why he tried to come back to the hole or it would have been a touchdown. But at the end of the day, you can see how it's an easy one-play touchdown against cover three. Next up, we'll choose cover one. Go ahead and motion this guy out, put him on a smart route, put the Y route on a streak, put the A route a drag, and block the running back one more time. And we can have success to this route, although that covers cover one a little bit better than cover two. You can see we can still go up and high point that. But the real play here, the hope anyway, is the B route, as you can see right there. I did throw that a little bit early, but we still got the play because if you smart out that route, it really can make the cornerback bite and be a big play. Go ahead and we'll go to the replay. This is not a guarantee, though. This is kind of 50-50. Sometimes he'll bite on it, sometimes he won't. Like I said, if he's even, he's leaving. That's why what I meant I threw the ball too early. I meant I should have threw it here and lobbed it at this point, but the ball's already out of my hand. So, you know, and we bullet pass, which is not the best way to go. But you can see how that can be a one-play touchdown against cover one. Except we have the close PA cross. Start off with Tampa 2, as we always do. This play is a natural one-play touchdown against cover two. You just have to buy a little bit of time and wait for the X route here to get, uh, you know, inside the free safety because the strong safety drops. Since there's no real route pulling back the strong safety, you can see how he will lag behind and the, this receiver just basically just streaks right past him. So he's at the bullet and pass lead inside away from the free safety. Next up, we'll do cover two man. This play needs no setup against cover two man either, but the receiver can take a little bit longer based off of the fact that the, um, the, uh, the cornerback is pressing, is jamming. So it might take him a second to get off that jam, but you can see it's the exact same reaction to the safeties deep. Next up, we have cover three. So we're just going to block our drag tight end, unless you want that check down, because it'll probably come more in handy. This is a very tough cover three one-play bomb, but you can bomb up cover three if you have enough time. So I'm going to put the B round to come back, put the Y round to streak, and block my two tight ends. I'll also slide my protection. I'm also going to go as far as double-teaming J.J. Watt, because he'll probably be the, the reason that this play doesn't work if it doesn't work. Like I said, rolling out is going to be best. And now you can see you can get a one-play touchdown against this against cover three. But at the end of the day, like I said, you really need a mobile quarterback or a very good pass protection to get it done. Next up, we'll do cover one hole. So I'm going to put the A route on a streak and the crossing tight end and running back are typically going to be the best throws here. Um, that's pretty much going to be your best bet. You, you can try for the crossing route, but you probably won't have enough time. If you do have enough time, though, the X route will eventually get open with the streaking tight end. It's just an issue to, to buy this much time in the pocket. So if you have you know good blocking or a mobile quarterback and you make it happen, that route will get open. Next up, we'll do cover for quarters. Against cover for quarters, you're going to need a bigger speed advantage. You're also going to need more room on the field because I think that one of the best ways to beat this is by lob passing it. So that's going to be your best bet. But it does get behind the cover for free safety if you have a little bit of a speed advantage. Next up, we'll do cover four drop. Once again, this is a no adjustments, won't play touchdown. You just have to wait for the X route um, to get inside the safety there. You can see he gets over the top of the strong safety, and then you just have to make a bullet pass lead away. And it's a very easy one-play touchdown against cover four as well. Next up, we have the close 
PA sale. We're gonna go, we're gonna start off with cover two first. We'll go and we'll go to the nickel package for that. Tampa two. It's a very easy cover two bomb. You just have to put the X route here on a 10 yard out route. That's a five yard out route, then you smart route it. Put the RB route on a streak. The A route you can just block. I don't really need him doing that. You can block the running back too, but that's probably your best option for a check down. Then the B route here will get right up the center between the two safeties. Once it gets inside the safe, the strong safety, basically just bullet and pass lead up. Or you can lob it. It really doesn't matter. But it's very easy. We'll play touchdown against cover two. Next up, we'll do cover two man. Same setup. The uh, the B route here is inside the cover two cornerback, so he can't really get that relief, that press that he wants. And then it'll just basically just be going right up the middle once again. So just make sure you have your fastest guy here. Very easy. We'll play touchdown against cover two man as well. Next up, we'll pick cover three. This step's going to be pretty similar. You've got to put the A route on a streak and then the X route on a comeback route. The running back you can block, but this is going to be the look. So the B route here, once again, is going to get across the safety. As you can see right there, I just, you know, need a little bit of time. I don't get the best throw. But, you know, you can't run this the exact same way. You can't put the RB route on a streak because the safety won't be occupied. You need the cornerback to be occupied so that you can occupy the safety with the streak. So this is the only real setup. We'll do that again. Uh, the B route here, like I said, I just have to kind of wait for him to get inside of that safety. Bullet, pass lead away. And I guess I'm just not throwing the ball very good, but you can see he's passing it. You can also see that the cornerback is nowhere near to be found on the on the X route. He's gonna bite on that on that comeback route. So let's go. Let's do this one more time. I'm trying to get a completion and I'm not getting it. Oh, we did get it there. Boom. So you can see it's an easy one. Play touchdown against cover three. Next up, we'll pick cover one hole. Against cover one man, you can put the X route on a slant. You can put the A route on a streak to pull back coverage. Uh, it's really up to you. If you want that RB route, which is a decent check down depending on um, you know who you have running it. Like here, I mean, I don't really have a, a good receiving tight end. But if you don't want to lose that, you can always put the A route on the streak. Next up, we'll pick cover four quarters. The setup for cover four quarters is going to be the same with the exception of you don't streak the RB route. You want to leave the RB route doing what he's doing. It's going to give you just a little bit of an inside lead, uh, and then you can make a big play. There, I threw the ball a little bit early. Go ahead and I'll do that again. I'll block my tight end, and I'll slide my pass for tight end. I give my tight end a little bit of help. Uh, but you can see, I mean, this guy here can get past uh, the, re, uh, the cornerback there, or the safety, rather, whose coverage. Um, is not going to be good enough. Once again, we need a pretty fast receiver to get this done or a very good route running advantage. Next up, we will pick cover four. We'll have to go to the dime package for that. Go cover four drop. Now, this can be a one play touchdown against cover four, but unless you have a really fast receiver, a huge speed advantage, it's not necessarily going to work. Uh, pretty similar setup to the cover three. Streak the RB route, put the X route on a comeback. Then you want to put the, uh, the Y route on a curl. I'm sorry, not a curl, a wheel route. That's going to occupy that safety. And then, like I said, if you have a fast enough receiver, you can get inside of the, the strong safety and over the top of the free safety because the free safety bites on the wheel route. Next up, we have the halfback zone weak. So this play, once again, you can motion over the tight end if you want to. I don't find it's necessary. If you have a gap over the guard, I typically find it's just a good inside run. You could also flip it if the advantage is on the other side. I find that that might actually work better because of the two tight ends. Uh, might handle the defensive front a little bit better. So you can really run in either direction. Because I noticed that in previous years, this guard would do a better job of picking up this defensive uh, or this this linebacker, which there he did do, but it feels a bit spotty. So at the end of the day, it might be best just to flip it and give yourself a blocking advantage where there's two tight ends. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, this, this formation is all about the stretch run. This is just a good inside run to counter that. Next up out of the wing pair, we have the halfback inside zone. This is your inside run. Uh, whether you want to flip it, because here we have a much bigger uh, hole to the right side, or you just want to run it to the left, because typically this formation will pull everybody um, in one direction. You can see right here, even that that uh, cornerback, or that, I'm not sure if it's cornerback or safety, but he kind of played down outside. If it's cover three, he's typically going to leave that spot. So right here, this is a perfect opportunity just to take this in the opposite direction, although he did a really good job of stopping me there. This is your best inside run in the formation. You can flip it with the right stick and really run in either direction you want to go. But you can see typically the direction of design is going to be best. It's just a good uh, run to keep your opponents uh, balanced because the best run is going to be the outside run from this formation. But a lot of times you'll notice that that guard will double team and then get to the next level. And that's typically going to be your read. Now right here there's a guy waiting back there at safety. So I'll flip it. I'll go towards this hole, make him chase me, and I can still have a better chance for a good inside run. Next up we have the PA sprint halfback flat. 
This is similar to the previous play I showed in a different formation where I'm going to want to motion this guy in so he gets across the line quicker. And then I want to put either the RB route or the B route on a streak. It really doesn't matter which one, but I think the B route's probably best. Your man beater is going to be the X route. He'll cross the field faster now because I motioned him in. And then your zone beater is going to be the Y route and the A route. But it's really going to be three levels of passing, which is going to be really what makes this so good. You can see here that looks like a zone coverage. Tight end gets outside of it. The running back in the flats also a very good option, although there I just took the deeper one. Here we have another, you know, all on man blitz. I might not really go this route against a man blitz, but I know already that it's pretty much just going to be the A route here, which is another good man beater once again, or the crossing receiver, which is really going to be your best two options against man. The tight end should really be the RB route tight end should really get open against just about anything. It's not the RB route tight end, I'm sorry. It's the uh, the A route tight end should get open against just about anything, just as long as you throw it on timing. Like there, that was a cross body throw. Didn't really do the best job. But it's still going to be one of the best routes. I also didn't, you know, motion in my uh, my check down, which is really going to be important. Except we got the PA tight end seam. It's another play where all I'm going to do is put the B route here on a drag, and we're pretty much going to be reading the high low routes going across the field. Uh, that's pretty much it. Your comeback route is going to be a good check down. It'll be man or zone. But typically, if I call this play, it's to play off of all the running plays in this formation. I'm really going to hit the B route or the A route, and that's pretty much all I'm going to need to read for the most part, unless the user is Johnny on the spot. You can see right there. I mean, there's nothing really there. Like I said, if you're if you're running the ball successfully, your opponent will have to bite down on the play action on the run plays. Next up, we have the PA X burst cross. This play here is an easy setup. I'm just going to put the B route on a drag. That's all I really got to do. And my crossers are going to be the play. If it's a man coverage, you'll see how the running back really doesn't get open. But the, the two crossing tight ends typically beat man coverage. The running back's really only going to beat zone. You can always put the B route on like an in route too if you find that they're colliding or getting too close together. But when you throw it to the running back, a lot of times that tight end crossing will turn into a blocker. So that's one of the reasons you want that there. So really easy read. You have your, your B and your A route should be just about anything, man or zone. Uh, and like right here, we're just basically playing a levels game as the deep route gets forgotten in the crossers. It looks like it might have been a cover two. And you can see we're just basically working our way from front to back. Really easy read, though. If it's zone coverage, it's going to be the running back. If it's man coverage, it can only be the tight end or, the, or one of the two tight ends. Next up, we have the stretch alert looky. The slant's going to be best against zone but or against man, but it realistically, as long as there's nobody out here to step in front of the window, you can throw it. The run play itself is really going to be best against like cover three, cover four, because typically the cornerbacks drop back, which is what that was, but there was a lot of extra defenders there. At the end of the day, this is just a good goal line run, like if, or a good goal line play. Like if I want to take some short yards, I can just punch it in from, you know, a couple yards out, just cut it off short. But I don't really find that stretch run really works that great in this formation, like it would traditionally in other formations against cover three. But you can see I'm getting close to five every single time. If I really wanted to run it, I'd probably run to that from the hash mark to the open side of the field. And if it is a cover three or cover four, you can motion this guy out to try to create a blocking advantage. As you can see right there, it pulls the coverage back, which is actually preferred at this point. Although it can change things as far as how you get to the outside because there was an extra defender out there. So that's the one adjustment you can make to possibly make this run play better. Next up, we got the tight end attack. This is a very popular play. It was a meta play uh, in Madden 22. So I'm including it here, even though I never really used that play much there, and I'm not really going to use it too much in Madden 23. Uh, it's a very good play, though. The running back is one of the better options. Um, I don't know why he decided to run the route in the direction that he did. I mean, you can always put him on an out route in the other direction. I find that that's uh, a little bit more effective. But the A route crossing tight end I know is a very good play. Um, there's definitely a lot of throwing angles to the three tight ends on the side um, that you can always take advantage of. Like right here, you can see that uh, the tight end just slips right behind the zone, and you can have a lot of success there. And that, a large portion of that is because of this tight end pulling the routes. You can motion him out, too, to basically create more space for that. Here, it looks like we have an all-out man blitz. Um, which I typically wouldn't recommend running that too. But the A route here is a very good route, even though, you know, that whole play, I probably wouldn't run that against man blitz at all, to be honest with you, because you can see there's just so much going on there. But you can motion out this B route here, have a lot of success with that, and then you can see how that A route really clears the crossing route for the tight end, even though I have a, probably my worst tight end running the second most important route. Next up, we have the four verticals. I'm going to go, we're going to pick cover three, Sky. I'm going to put the B route in a fade, put the X route in a comeback, and then we're going to motion out this tight end. That's all we really have to do. And the B route here is going to be a very easy one play touchdown just as long as he doesn't get too wide to where the cornerback is. As you can see right here, all we have to do is bullet, pass lead, maybe free form a little bit away from the safety. It's a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. You can also have success against cover two. We're going to pick Tampa two. 
This play is a natural cover two play, but you can make it better by motioning this guy out and just keeping it consistent. The uh, the wheel route on the tight end side will get open, but you typically don't have the same athlete that you have on the other side of the field or the receiver. So you really can go to either side. If you want to throw to a guy that can score, though, the X route is a much better option. As you can see, we can bullet pass lead to the boundary and we can get a very easy one play touchdown because the option route really does pull the safety in quite a bit. Next up, we have the inside cross. We'll run it against random. A lot of times the user will follow these drags out of the middle of the field and it'll leave the comeback route over the middle of the field open. The computer won't do that the same way, but that's something that you can expect from your user opponent. So you're really just working the drags and then you obviously have um, the comeback route over the middle of the field if your opponent follows one of the drags, which really can be the better play of the two. Even here, like that's a man coverage, still beats that. So that's something that you should always have an eye on as those are really the two main reads. A lot of people like to throw to the running back too, which is something that I'm not really all about. As you can see right here, that's to me the running back's not part of the read structure, but a lot of people like to throw to the running back in this route. I think it probably works better against zone. It's just not something that I personally do. As you can see right there, you can back shoulder and stuff like that to get that running back open, but that's not really my personal preference. Next up, we got the PA fork. It's another good play with multiple man beating routes. The running back will beat zone, but the best plays are going to be the B route here, which will beat to the outside. That'll beat any man cover. Just make sure you're running from a boundary. You have multiple man beating routes here. The B route is probably the best. I'll cancel my play action just to get that out there a little quicker. This route here will beat to the sideline every single time. Just running from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Against man coverage, the B route and the A route are going to get open uh, pretty easily. As you can see, they're both man beating routes. There had to throw it a little bit quickly though. So that route's a good route, but the B route is really the best route on this play. As you can see, that'll also be man coverage and it'll do it where the user is typically not. The running back is a good check down against zone if it is a zone coverage as these other routes can also beat zone, but at the end of the day, they're better against man. Next up we have, next up we have the PAY cross flood. Start off with Tampa 2. Against cover 2, just put the RB route tight end on a 10 yard out route. You can motion them out to create more separation, but if you don't want a giveaway or a tell, you can just run it as is. You can see how this receiver splits the safeties for an easy one play touchdown. Next up, we'll do cover two man. Just put the RB route on a 10 yard out route. And the B route, if he gets past the jam, can beat cover two, but if he doesn't, the A route's gonna get open every single time. Next up, pick the stretch alert bubble. Go ahead and pick cover three. So another play that's going to be best against cover three and cover four zones. If you can hold this ball and wait to throw it until that defender comes inside to react to the stretch run, you'll get a bigger catch and run than if you throw it out instantly because he's not really, you know, he didn't really react yet. So if you're going to throw it to the stretch, or to the bubble screen, you have to hold it as long as possible. But the run play is also a decent run against cover three. I mean, I'm obviously running to the short side of the field. You typically want to, whatever play you're going to go to, you want to do it on the open side of the field so you have more space. But like I said, this year, if I can hold this as long as possible, I can get a better result uh, based off of the fact that the cornerback drifts in further to the line of scrimmage. Next up, we have the zone alert bubble. We'll go random on defense. Against cover two man and zone, the zone play, the zone runs can be best, but against cover three and cover four, the wheel or the bubble screen will be best. But you really just have to watch the cornerback. Like right there, he goes after the receiver, meaning it's a man coverage, so I have to hand it off. But you definitely want to watch the uh, the cornerback, like right here. He comes in, we could throw it out. It might have been a man coverage, it might have been a man blitz with the cornerback, but that's really the easiest way to read this play, is just watch that cornerback in front, as you can see right there. I mean, like I said, the result of the run play doesn't really matter. It would be a pick six if I make it a poor read and throw it to the wheel route or the, uh, the bubble screen on a play like that, which isn't, you know, obviously it's better to take a, a handoff for a loss than forcing it out. They say we're getting a lot of looks where the where they're actually following that receiver, so I have to hand it off every single time. Next up, we got the PA boot right tackle. Pretty much all these routes beat man. I'm going to motion in the X route though because I want to get across the formation a little bit faster. The RB route is a unique route that can beat man coverage if you throw it in the break. Uh, like I did there as you can see he bites a little bit too hard inside the tight end is probably the best or at least the most consistent man beater but you can see right there he gets followed by the yellow zone and I don't know why I didn't catch that because I did come back to the ball but you can see there's definitely an opportunity there and I did forget to motion this guy in motioning this guy in is important it took it basically took him away 
from being a read because I didn't motion him in. So one more time, like I said, the A route wide open there. I'm keep. I don't know why Jalen Hurts can't throw on the run apparently because you can see this guy's getting wide open. But you can see there's multiple man beating routes here. <clears throat> Also going to have a lot of success against cover, too. So let's go on this pick cover two zone. Go put the A route on a streak. That's what I really have to do. Pull back the safety. And then I probably should have canceled the play action, though. As you can see, we still get a one-play touchdown. I wasn't expecting that. I uh, kind of forgot about the play action. But if you want a better play with a little bit more control, just cancel the play action pre-snap by putting your receiver or your running back on a uh, pass block, and now you can see how that really just gets. Once he gets past the cornerback, he really aims for the open area of the cover two zone. Next up, out of the single back wide trips, we have the stretch alert looky. Against cover three, cover four, and man coverage, you can run the, the stretch, and it's going to be a very good play. You can see right there, they follow the receivers back. Against cover three and cover four, they'll just typically drop back on their own, although there he just kind of stepped forward. Uh, so that could be one issue. But at the end of the day, it's a good run play, especially against man. You also have the X route here, which will beat man coverage, and it'll also um, you know, beat any zone coverage as long as there's nobody directly in the area to drop into the route. So pretty much both of these plays will work against both things. Like right here, he's playing way off. It's a cover three. It's an easy option. It's a very good red zone, a red zone goal line play as well as a critical situation play. Next up, we got the wide receiver post. It's another good man coverage play. Lots of routes here beat man. The tight end, the corner route, which you can see if I throw it in the break, gets open against man coverage as it gets outside. The slot receiver does also. That's kind of just like a crossing route. As you can see right here, he's going to get in front of that. So lots of good man beating concepts on this play. Next up, we have the Y trail. The slant and the A route will both beat man coverage. I'd say put the B route on an in route so you can have a third man coverage option. But they're all really going to beat man, as you can see right here. They're going to clear the center one way or the other. Um, so you're really just watching the slant first, which is really made to clear. Then the X or then the, the A route, which is going to be coming after that. Like I said, whichever one, the um, as you can see, I'm not getting a good, I didn't get a good throw there. I didn't get a good pass at all. But you can see he gets in front of that. They're all, there's three man beating routes. As long as you put the B route on an in route, you have three different routes to beat man. I haven't thrown to the slant yet. I'll try to force it if he doesn't get covered here. As you can see, we're, you know, we have multiple man beating options. Next up, we got the bench switch. Go random. You can do any number of things here to create the concept I'm going to create. You can motion the fullback to the line, put the A route on the drag. You can motion the tight end across. Or the receiver for that matter and put him on a streak but although the receiver goes out a little bit further than i want this probably here would give you the best opportunity because of the fact that you have um you know the two receivers there which is going to be the most explosive as we get a cover three it gets open up the scene i'll show you a cover three play here in a minute that really wasn't it but if you do any of these setups i guess i can motion across the tight end put the the b route on a streak there's any number of things you can do you can put the the, the fullback here on and out route for your check down. There's so many different uh, things you can do um, to create that high low concept that I'm trying to create. I find it's best to motion across this receiver though and put him on a streak and then blocking the other two uh, guys because the, the Y route's gonna be my check down. As you can see here, he even beats the man coverage <laughs> because the man coverage defender was so far across the field. We'll pick that play against cover three. Actually, we'll pick cover two first. Once again, motion this guy across, streak him. You'll get a high-low route concept with the X route and the Y route. And you can see how it splits the cornerback safety, which is going to be best. Next up, we'll show cover to man. Same thing, motion this guy across. Like I said, against man coverage, it's best to go with like the A route on a drag because that's going to be something that actually beats that coverage. And then you can see how this X route here gets outside of cover two very easily. Big play. Next up, we'll choose cover three sky. Go ahead and we'll do that setup like this. Although, you know, against cover three, it's going to be best to add the A route on a streak. You'll see how the B route here will split the uh, cornerback safety with a good pass lead. As you can see, we get a very easy explosive play that could easily be a one play touchdown. Next up, we'll do cover one robber. Next up, we got the fullback power. Just make sure you typically want to have a big running back or a fast running back in that spot. Just a quick inside handoff. You can see here, I mean, I have, you know, my fullback, my tight end, my backup tight end running it. The more speed, the better. It's a quick handoff. Like I said, it's something that you really want to take it hard to the right. Or if you see a hole right in the middle, that's typically going to be where you want to go. 
but uh, I find, I mean, this is just a good, you know, third and short situation run. As you can see, I'm easily getting two, three yards and falling forward every single time. So this is something where you could easily average four or five yards of carry as well, but it's really best for critical situations. Next up, we got the mesh. This is a good uh, red zone play, but it's really going to be best against man coverage. It's like all out man blitz. You can see right there, um, you know, the, the double drags is really the most important part of this. So it's a good short yardage play. Against cover three, though, do the same setup. Motion out the running back, put the A route on a streak. You don't have to streak the, the RB route anymore. I mean, he's fine doing what he's doing, but put the X route on a fade. And you're going to see we're going to have the exact same success once that receiver bites on that corner route. And you can get a one-play touchdown with either one of these plays. Except we have the halfback gut. One of the better inside runs, uh, just make sure you cross the fullback's back, as you can see right there. If I went inside, I would have got picked up. Next up, we have another red zone play in the weak mesh. It's really a good uh, short yards play as the double drags will beat most things, man or zone. Uh, but you really don't have a good secondary option. So I would say it's best to put the Y route here on like a comeback route so that no matter what your, your opponent does, there's always going to be somebody in the middle of the field. So if they follow the drags, which is something you see in a lot of other mesh concepts, at least you'll have this guy sitting in the middle. So like here, we're getting a lot of man coverages. The drags will beat that. But if the user is there and he tries to drop on one of the drags, it'll give you the comeback route right over the middle of the field wide open. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.